Hello everybody, welcome to Fabtech 2017 for Facebook Live. You can see over there in the back, there's a table, tabletop that I brought with me from New York. We're gonna cut and fabricate the bottom. It's a table I made in my rustic style. It's got some rough cut wood, some riveted, blacksmith rivets in there. And I designed and cut an industrial style base, trestle base with the Lincoln logo. We're gonna weld that together at one point today and make it the bottom of the table. And in each one of the other YouTubers, we got John Malecki, April. We got April Doug from Retro Weld, uh, Johnny Brook, and ZH Fabrication, Zach from ZH Fabrication. Let's go take a look and see who's hanging out. Oh! So can I ask you a couple questions quickly before sure. we go? You're working on April's parts? Yes. April Wilkerson is making what amounts to basically a hand grenade that's gonna be a stool, and April laid out all these parts on a computer program. Do you know what program she used? I'm not sure what program she used. No. I used TorchMate CAD. So whatever she used, she brought it into TorchMate CAD, and now Jason's gonna cut it out. Are you gonna cut these out right now? Yeah. And what do we got, 11 gauge? Yeah. 11 gauge, two by four steel. So he's gonna hit start right now. How expensive is that lens? <laughs> I want to show you how to ruin a GoPro. Take a GoPro like this and put it right here. That's how you ruin a GoPro. <laughs> Get the right feeds and speeds, and you get a beautiful cut. I was gonna pull that out, but I thought it was going the other direction. I always say having a machine like this is like having magic powers or special powers like a superhero. Because you can take up to half inch steel and make any shape you want out of it within minutes. It's, it's, it's been one of the most creative, enlightening things for me in recent years is having this machine. It's like, your creativity is like boundless. Come look. We have John Malecki right here. John, say hello to everybody. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Zach from ZH Fabrications. We got Johnny Brook. A little crappy workshop. How tell, you guys doing? tell everybody what, a little bit about what you're making. Okay. Yeah, I got. I'm making a little walnut and maple stool. This is my uh, my stool seat, obviously. And then I'm just using some one-inch square tubes to uh, build up the base. Real simple and easy. Power carved the top at home. Brought it with me. Wait, you didn't lay that? No, man. Power carving. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So, Very cool. Yeah. John, what are you making? Do it quick. Quick four one one. Got just a standard looking chair. Well, I've got most of it on the table. I'll stitch rubber on the inside. And I got reclaimed wood that'll sit inside. My mic is right here. You're gonna talk. Gonna talk into my chest. <laughs> so <laughs> let me get down here. I got a. Uh, we're plasma cutting almost all the parts on the table, and then I'll stitch weld it all on the inside so it's hidden. And then I'm gonna right. insert some reclaimed wood I brought from back in Pittsburgh oh, that's right. um, as the back plate and as right a seat. On. Right on. And. Zach, what are you making? I'm show you. Come look at this. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna impale somebody. Uh, anyway. By the way, while we're getting ready for Zach, check out this cool helmet. I love this helmet. And I'm collecting stickers, so if you're at the show today and you got a cool sticker, bring it. I'll put it on the inside of my helmet. So I built this part in my shop here. I built a bench for the table. Um, 
this is what I have so far. Yep. This is the legs with some pipe and some uh, inch and a half hole thread. It's actually going to be a C clamp. Uh, the the table is going to be held in place by two giant C clamps. So. And the C clamp profile is going to be cut at a quarter inch. Quarter inch on, on the, the table. Uh, the table there. So yeah. Right on. And then you're going to be fabbing that all up a little bit later today. Yep. Right on. We'll check back in. We're going to end on April in a minute, but let me do some interviews with some of these guys. Where is the godfather of welding? We're going to come back to you. We're going to end on the segment on you. You got a second? You got a second to say hello to the world? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, world. <laughs> Come over here, brother. You're gonna have to take me by the hand and show me this what is, I need to do. This is the godfather of welding. If you don't know Jody, you gotta watch Jody on YouTube, Welding Tips and Tricks, and the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast with Roy Crumrine and John Lewis. And who else? It's just you three guys, right? Yeah. Right we, on. Have, we have guests every now and then, but right. that's the core but, uh, what we do on the podcast. How many Fab Techs in a row have you been to? Well, I started it. I started my first one was in 1990. It wasn't even called Fabtech then. <laughs> wow. I probably missed maybe three of them since then. Wow. So over 20. And every yeah. year, it seems like obviously uh, this is my first, but I can only tell from being in the toy business. Every year you come to these shows and there's like the very specialized, tricky thing that everybody's up to. It yeah. seems like this year everybody's got robot arms. Uh, maybe that's been a couple years coming. Yeah. And do you remember like 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 20 years ago, what was the robot arm? Even 20 years ago, they would have demos where they had a robot arm. They had a, a, a hand fitted on it, or a right. suction cup, and it would, right. it would go grab a basketball and slam dunk it, and then go back over right. and grab another one out of the bin. <laughs> right, because so many welders basketball yeah, use well, basketball. Yeah, just a, a demo, <laughs> a, parlor, a parlor trip, you know. Right. But, and they would also have dancing robots sometimes, you know, where, right. where they'd have them choreographed. Right. But th it's been around a while. You could, you could come to these things and think, if you didn't dig in a little bit, like this is the same thing year to year. Right. But there's always something new and innovative, right. you know. Always and what about something. plasma tables seem like they're, they're very prevalent. I mean, and, right. and I just got my hands on I never in a million years thought I would ever get my hands on a plasma table or be able to even use one. To me, it was always going to be that one thing that I had to always go farm out. But now they're more available to mostly everybody. They are. They are. Now, now with uh, with YouTube and everything out there, so readily available information. Right, information. Like, it's not a learn not as steep a learning curve to uh, learn how to cut on a on a CNC plasma because you can just type in how to cut on this plasma. And, you know, there's gonna be 10 good users that are providing information freely right. to get you going on it. Right. Including me, by the way, in case you don't know me, I'm a YouTuber. Yeah, he's a, yeah. He's a YouTuber. He's got a little small burgeoning <laughs> channel. Fledgling channel, yeah. Millions plus subs, you know. I'm hoping for 10 yeah. million, then I can get my platinum button. Yeah. Hoping. Yeah, you got, the, you got the million button, right? I got the million button in, uh, I got it just in the mail just now, but I got million in May. Okay. So they're always like a few months yeah. behind. But it's nice to get it. I mean, really, honestly, I opening that up, it's like, Wow, it works so hard for this. You know? Yeah, it's, it's so, a nice, it's a nice, it's it a is. nice thing. So YouTube, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, and um, any, any, anything anybody should be looking for while they're walking through Fabtech. I know that's a general question, but you've been here for so long and so often. Well, I have always found the little nuggets. Uh, the benefits, the takeaways when I go back home are because I stopped and took the time to talk and ask questions, right. get people's names, get their card, build a little bit of a relationship, and next thing you know, the next year, they remember you, and it turns into something. That's what I would say. Just take right time. On. Good advice. If you come to a fab tech, take time to dig in a little deeper than, right than what's on the surface. Right on. I'm going to pull this guy in. JD, get over here. Tell everybody your name and what you do. Uh, my name's JD and I weld. <laughs> He's a welder. And where do you live? Atlanta. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, we're just talking about plasma tables and your channel particularly has really expanded artfully yes. since you got your hands on a plasma table. Yes, it's completely changed the way I do work. Right. Everything. I, I completely changed. I've seen you do letters recently. Yes. Is That's, that because of the table? Yes. I was actually able, people have asked me to do signs before and I haven't been able to do that. Right. Because I can't cut out a nice looking letter. Right. And uh, yeah, now I can do signs. I've actually done quite a few signs. Right on. Just it's expanded your business. Yeah. And you want, I'm, I mean, your, your meat and potatoes is doing uh, big heavy stuff. Big heavy decks around like mm -hmm. distilleries and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, just any kind of business. Uh, platforms, mezzanines. Yeah. 
And you okay. use a MP210? Yes, all the time. All the time. 210, all the time. And you use a kind of an unusual way of welding. You want to talk a little bit about your method? Yeah, for the heavy stuff, uh, I use dual shell flux core, 035, in that, in the MP210. Right. Under the, uh, the dual, So that means you got gas and you got a flux core wire at the same time? Yes, yep. Yeah. And uh, with the gas and the flux, it gives a nice, uh, pretty, right. but strong weld. Right. It's, uh, you get a deeper penetration, you think, yes. with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you're welding, sometimes you're welding like half inch thick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Actually, when you weld a half inch thick, do you preheat it or do you just rely on the power of the welder? I, I rely on the power of the welder. Right on. I really do. Yeah. yeah. I noticed it's lately. Real cold, I'll preheat it. Yeah, in some of your posts, you've been talking a little bit about cold welds and, you know, showing yeah. some examples of bad cold welds. One right down there. You got one? <laughs> uh oh, he's going to show something. Right. Oh, yeah, there you go. I saw that sitting off center. I didn't know if he welded it that way or. <laughs> so that's what you call a cold welder. You don't let it get hot enough on both materials. Well, with this mill scale that's on here, it's hard wire. This is why I don't like hard, using hard wire for anything like this. I would use dual shield flux core. Right. It eats right through this mill scale that this could not eat through. I mean, it's right. nice and flat all the way around there. Uh, right. That's why I like the dual shield. Oh, wow. That's pretty um, cool. See, with something like this, I would assume that the, the bolt is just sucking all the heat right out of the... That's part of it, too. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really, it's the mill scale that just kind of, it's a force field. It just right. stops it from welding. Really? Wow, I didn't know. I noticed you did that. There was like some old painted thing that was broken apart, and you said mm -hmm. it was the mill scale. Yep. Right. yep, that's exactly what happened. Well, yep. well, it happened just like this, and it looked fine. Right. You know, these are just little tacks, but they had full welds all the way around, and did this, and it broke off just like that. There was no, no penetration on one side of the right. material. Wow, very cool. So uh, what, what, what's your takeaway from Fabtech? You've been here many times, I'm assuming. So cool. Yeah. There's so much cool stuff here. It's incredible, yeah. right? I, the biggest thing for me is I look around, I see these giant machines, and I say to myself, where's all this electric coming from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my electrician whines and moans when I tell him I'm going to run a plasma table in my shop. He's like, uh -huh. I'm like, dude, there's like 65 million volts going through this place this right place now. This crazy, yeah. They got some machines in here that, like on the second floor, and I'm just like, Worried about the floor. I, mean, I, know. I know the building's good, but the machines are so huge in here. Some of the machines here are like tens of thousands of pounds, yeah. and they're like throwing a counterweight or a die press or something, and you feel the floor rumbling. Yes, it's like it's the kind of the failure is going to be just like the floor is just going to rumble apart. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be a crack; it's just going to fall. Too much cool stuff in one spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, on. All right, let's take a look. Let's go see what April's up to. Thanks, bro. Yes, sir. Good to see. You. I'm Thank glad you. we got to be friends over the last couple yeah, of years, bro. That's great. This guy's awesome. Love this guy. Cool. <laughs> We got room to sneak back here, Norm? Yeah, it took like three seconds. Hey, guys. Hey. What's up, Jimmy? What's up, everybody? This is April Wilkerson, and April is making a stool that is mimics a grenade. It's the bomb. It is the bomb. And could you talk a little bit about these? I've never used oh, these. I've never used these, but man, they make life easy. These have a uh, switch on them. You can turn off the, the magnet, the polarization. Is wow. that what it is? Where do you buy these? I guess Lincoln Electric. <laughs> really? No, they're actually, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess Lincoln, so. Lincoln. Yeah, you can. Lincoln, you, can, you never told me about these. Yeah, you, know, you turn the knob and it, and it uh, deactivates the magnet feature, and then you turn the knob and it activates it. So, what you can do instead of having to like smash it into place in order to get a nice, good 90, you can actually just deactivate it, put your part in place, get the, get the 90 nice and good, and then activate it. That's cool. It saves a lot of time. And you know what these are also good for, too? And I know just because I've played with similar product, getting rid of all the, the dirt. You got a million things ah. stuck to it, you know, you just do it and shake it off. It gets rid of everything. But these are amazing. Yeah, they're really good. So tell me what inspired this project. Uh, coming here, being told I needed to make a stool, coming up with uh, <laughs> right? a design that didn't make me look like a chump against you guys. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and uh, is, uh, how, how high is it going to be? 
It's gonna be 18 inches to it, match your table. It seems so much bigger than some of the social media I've been seeing. Yeah, but that's it, because I, it, there's no scale. You right. put a person in there, you right. put a workbench in there, right. and all of a sudden it is to scale. But right. like with your table, what is it, 32 inches? It's uh, 20, 29, 30 inches yeah. high, yeah. So, so this is the right size. It is the right size, but it looks yeah. it looks tiny with a real person sitting on it. So what I'm gonna do is, is probably use this more as an end table, but yeah. for a fab deck, yeah. it's so, gonna be a stool. Right on. And you're gonna start welding this right now? I, be I believe so. Yeah. Right on. And we're using the MP210. MP210. And you have your own MP210. I do. And has it? how has it changed your workflow having an MP210? Well, I mean, it's the only welder I've ever used. Right. So, uh, it's perfect. But it, it's perfect because I, I don't know anything about setting my own feed rate or the voltage. Right. So by having a machine that pre-programs it, I can right. just like turn it on, say I'm right. going to be doing 11 gauge material right. with 0.35 wire or whatever it is. Right. And then um, it, it sets the feed rate and voltage for me. Right on. Very cool. Yeah. And is Cody welding too? No. He's never welded? He tries and he's so bad. At it, really? but, I'm like, like, cause the deal is, is like, if there's a project being welded, it's my project, and right. he does like pigeon crap looking welds. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but you have to like go practice on something else. But then he never does. Right, right. So yeah, I'm the, I'm the only welder right now. Oh, very good. What do we do? Fancy. Oh, wow. Fancy. Uh, so that's your helmet. But if you wanted to cut out four, then that would be amazing. Right on. So. Yeah, so the machine, the 210, you want us to talk about it again? Yeah, so, tell me why you like the MP210 again. I like the MP210, or just... The, uh, well, as a, as, a, as, a, as a beginner welder when you first got it, you yeah. said it was. I don't know anything about welding, so I can't set my own feed rate or voltage just simply because I don't have the imp I don't have the knowledge yet. The on, reference. Or, yeah, I don't have a reference on what what needs to change according to my weld. Right. So this machine will do it for me. I, I'm welding with 11 gauge material with 0.35 wire, and it just sets the feed rate and the voltage for me. You just go through there, like if you've ever had a welder where you just have two dials and you don't know where they live mm -hmm. or where they're supposed to live or they have any reference. You go to the computer screen on the MP210. You tell it what wire you're using, what process you're using, and what thickness you're using, and it gives you everything you need. Yeah. And then it gives you a dynamic range too, so you can go up a little bit if you want to make your weld a little bit hotter. If you end up with the problem like we had, what we just showed with the nut and bolt, if you were a little bit hotter, you could have gone through that, penetrated, penetrated through that plate a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And then also, if your feed rate, you want a little bit more wire in the puddle, you throw in your inch per minute up or turn it down as you need be. Yeah, it's just a plug and play machine. I took it out of the box. The live feed's unplugged? Oh, cool. Got a little job. Okay, so what I was talking about was the gas itself. I know from my own personal experience years ago when I first started experimenting with welding, I stayed away from gas. I just used flux core and I had a Lincoln 140 and I used flux core because to me I'm like, oh, I don't need a tank, I don't need a tank. And then one day I had that opportunity to weld with gas and the difference between a flux core weld. Did you ever weld with a flux core? I've never done it. Oh, good. So you don't, you don't. With, uh, it's messy, it's splattery and it, you know, I'm sure there's guys that are good at it, but I just never was good at it. But once you start welding with gas, you have this beautiful clean weld. Were you intimidated by the gas? That's my long form question. No, because I, I don't know I don't know to be. Like right. I didn't I didn't chain it down when I first got it and apparently it's very important to chain your bottle. Oh, yeah. That's like a rocket. It, yeah, it can turn into a rocket, but I, I didn't even know that. So my problem with being a self taught like newbie, know nothing, is right. that I don't know to be intimidated by the gas. Oh, yeah. or, you know what I mean? There's thousands of pounds of pressure there and if you exactly. puncture a hole in it, the Boom. thing could spin around or shoot in the direction. Yeah, so no, I was never intimidated. And right. I just I, I went to my local welding shop and said what do I need and they gave me the tank and right. that's what I've been using ever since. They didn't give you the attitude like oh no here we go wasting our time with someone that doesn't know anything? No. Uh, my local guy was actually like super sweet and he, oh, would, good. he was very willing to take my money. Right on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing. What's that? Oh yeah yeah. Work. Right. Whatever you want to weld? Yeah, yeah. You feel like I welding? Got, <laughs> yeah I definitely do. I want to get this thing built. That's what this is about after all. I gotta all right, we gotta, my hair so We gotta lift the hood up. What's that? We gotta lift this up. Does it stop? Hey, actually, I didn't uh, set my presets on that hood. I don't know how to change the sensitivity or if it needs to. That's right out of the box. Oh yeah, let's see. I wonder if that's, is that magnetized? I will. Delay time, slow. Sensitivity. What is it, guys? Pull it out towards you. 
it's getting stuck. There you go. What's what's uh what's what should it be on for welding? Eleven or twelve? 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 Thirteen. Is that twelve good? Yeah, between yeah, that's good. See how much you know about welding? <laughs> I have bionic eyes. So you want me I to see explain what, what it is time. I'm gonna be doing first? Yep, you're gonna start piecing your thing. You have a your oh. ribs are trapped each thing, so you're gonna have to you have a certain sequence you need to weld. Yeah, I have a sequence and what I did is I actually came with a uh, pre-made jig to because I didn't want to have to rely on anybody helping me. Right. Uh, so I came with the jig to help me hold all of the rings in place. Okay. And then I also came with the jig to make sure I could get the rings concentric with one another. Okay. So yeah, I I, I try to come prepared. Right on. But uh, essentially what I'm going to be doing first is welding or tacking in two of the verticals and then, or probably actually one, I changed up the process. And then I'm going to be sliding in the horizontal rings and then finishing with the uprights. That's not my jacket. I have to find my jacket, guys. It's in that bag right there. Okay. Let's go. We'll give you two minutes to get started. I'll come right back. Thanks. What? It's had a Doug. Hmm? Doug. It's had a Doug. Oh, Doug. Doug. Come here. Tell us about the first time you welded. Uh, probably 10 years ago. And were you intimidated? A little bit. And what got you over the hump? I took a class at a local community college because I bought an old car to restore. Uh -huh. And uh, I needed to replace all the metal in the, the car, so I took the class. And, yeah, right, on. right on. And when you started your channel, you started your channel basically from scratch. You weren't in any kind of fabrication business, no. I'm guessing. So the plan was to learn how to weld so I could restore the car. Then I had a son and I sold the car. <laughs> and I just started making stuff. Right on. So, but, you know, just. Because you kind of came out of nowhere with Retro Weld. All of a sudden, you started seeing your logo everywhere and making cool old stuff. Well, I used to watch you. You know, it was my pastime. Right. I'd watch you. <laughs> right, thank you. My inspiration to go I have a garage. YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just kind of morphed. I just started making stuff. Filming it and nice. putting it on YouTube for people to see, and it just kind of grew from there. Right on. And uh, what you you run in an MP210? MP, yeah. And you're also you've been really working hard on the square wave. Right. So I'm a square novice, wave 200. I'm a novice TIG welder, and so I got to spend some time with Jody from Welding Tips and, Tips and Tricks. We talked to Jody earlier today, the godfather of welding on YouTube. And I've been uh, TIG welding for maybe six months. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've got enough knowledge to where I can kind of get by. But I'm still, I have a long way to go, but I'm, I'm having a blast TIG welding. I'm actually yeah. enjoying TIG welding more now right. than I it's do. It's the challenge of getting That's getting right. that puddle right and getting those those That's right. those dimes laid out, yep. which I am very bad at. I've got a piece over here. Let me show you my Let's see what you're doing. Welds. So again, I'm a novice, but I'm having a blast. Right on. So here's a couple welds I have done. Nice. So what I plan to do is I'm gonna build, I'm gonna TIG weld my chair. This is 14 gauge steel. That's pretty. And uh, so you know, I'm I'm at a point now where I'm not embarrassed to show them, but I know there's still right. room for improvement. But every time I do it, you get better and better. I get better and better. So That's it's it. Just doing the hood time. So I'm looking for that that piece of. That'll be the back of the chair. Right on. And are you plasma cutting anything here today? I am not plasma. Well, I may, but if we have time, I'm going to try to plasma cut out the letters Lincoln. Tack all them to the top of the chair. Right on. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Right on. And where can people find you? At retroweld.com. Right on. And now you're a dedicated YouTuber now. I am. You've become a now. dedicated YouTuber. That's a big step. <laughs> that means people are watching. So Hopefully good luck, so. brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's check back in with April, see how she's doing. April, you ready? I gotta get my helmet too. Put these on under my helmet. Is that right?
watch you tack for a little bit. Okay. Well, I have, a, I have to, the problem with this design is I have to like, all of these have to be vertical and seated properly. So anyways, I came up with this flush back here. That looks good. But like if you get one of these kind of skewed, then it'll mess with, the, yeah, exactly. My machine's already on, it's already set. Yeah, it's on. 211 and I don't know what wire thing is we're actually using. I know these gloves are a little heavy. Man, I love this. Around a table. Oh, I know. You're going to get one of these soon. Yeah. Here's an 11 gauge. 11. That's great. Okay. Don't judge me, Jimmy. I would never. <laughs> Man, the sensitivity almost is like very sensitive. You might, if you want to, just to get a vibe on the on the on the way it's, it's welding, just throw a tack or two on that. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, that one sounds good. So what I do? This is kind of a slow process. put together, I did one as a test, where I put in two verticals first, and then I moved on to the rings, but then the problem is, it's getting in the rings is kind of hard. So I made this jig that seats over here, has a large footprint to stabilize, and now I can start adding in my rings. By the end of the show, you might make a couple of these. Yeah, actually, John was thinking about making one. So if, if maybe the you guys wanted to make one. Oh, right on. Because they're only like thirty dollars to ship, pre uh, like made. Because they're really not that heavy. I mean, they're twenty pounds. So if you, uh, I could make more, but if the guys wanted to make some, then of course y'all are welcome to. And then this is the very bottom one that I'll put in later. Oh, I see we're working upside down. Yeah, we're working upside down. And right does this now. scallop have any influence at all? That was not supposed to be there. That's a that's a something in the file got corroded oh, okay. or, or corrupted. Yep. And so that's in all the, the vertical uprights, but I did eventually take that out. Okay. So now more piecing together. Can I take these off? I think so. I really feel silly wearing safety glasses, <laughs> not doing anything right now. I'll put them back on when, when I will. Nothing. I don't like help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly your feeling. Okay. <laughs> what, buddy? Oh, it's looking good. I just gotta. Oh, it's live. Oh, hey. hey, what's up? We're making one of April's chairs. I'm just watching. I'm learning. <laughs> Later on, when I make my own. You gonna try to make one? Uh, sure. They're kind of fun. I mean, it's like kind of piecemeal at this point. But once all of these verticals are in line, then I can make sure that the rings are concentric, and then it goes really quickly. Because then it's just a bunch of tack, essentially. You want to put in one? I feel bad not letting you help. <laughs> I typically don't like people to touch my project. <laughs> that, that one wanted right in. Yeah, easy. yeah. That's the deal. Is that once you get uh, about two or three in, they go in together really quickly. And now I can just kind of rotate this around. Woo! Don't like that screeching sound. Oh, my GoPro. Thinking about adding a uh, like a ticking sound to it. Mm -hmm. 
Our grenades don't actually kick. You know? They just go boom. Yeah, they just boom. <laughs> Looks great. Now I can take my little jig out with the finagling. This is a, you know, very quick. Cool. It's got a jig. But now I can. I have a bungee cord. Oh, there you go. I'll hold it together. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think this ring. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Do you have, um, yeah, if you don't mind. I don't have a marker either. Of course you do. You have everything in your pockets. Did you make me a bagel wire in there? <laughs> <laughs> Can you reach in and mark? I, yeah. can't, I can't get my hand in there. You see, it's so 11. You run 11. So Let's see if I can get my eyeballs. Everybody still watching? You good? Want another one? No, yeah, that'll be fine. Just um, something to give me a, a quick reference. Do you see my bottom? Oh, here it is. On the door. We have a step stool right here. Oh. Hey, Julie, do we happen to have a step stool? That I can get up a little bit higher or some sort of fog? There? Yeah, everything's good. I have, yeah, not, not. Oh no, it's alright. So the reason for this thing is. This is a very smart solution. Yeah, but can I can I talk directly to the camera? So the problem with this right now is it the very first one I put together, I didn't realize it, but it was very skewed. Because at this point you can twist it and you can move it. So in order to finagle that, I grabbed uh, just some wood, traced out this cutout, and now I can hang a plumb bob from it, set it into place, right. and now I can wait till that plumb bob hits my center mark. And I was supposed to clamp it down, but I don't. I can hold it for you if you okay. need to. Let's look to see. That actually looks pretty good. My plumb bob is a little bit short, but yeah, I think I like oh, that's that. Oh, for standing. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry, I'm a shorty. I should have, right? <laughs> uh -huh. My head's also small. I have to suck down on this thing and cut off the butt. Yeah, I think that looks good. Well, also what I'm doing, guys, is I'm looking down at these verticals. Yeah, they look good. Because if I look down this one, then I shouldn't be able to get that other one directly in line. So it looks good. So now I'm going to start tacking again yeah. with my safety glasses on. And my gloves. Yeah, the video? uprights, if it was twisted, the uprights would be like that. But they all look very good. Yeah, so the pro... What's that? Tighten it? Yeah, on the side if you need it. Yeah, well, if it doesn't thank pop you. Down. on me. So this looks... Alright, before I attack it, I'm just, I'm nervous. I sometimes like get ahead of myself and don't think properly. Okay, it looks good. I'm going to attack it. Hey, Jimmy, would you adjust the sensitivity? 
it's just uh, where it's less. It so just you can stays, see more through it a little bit? Well, it's, it's, it's staying dark whenever oh. I'm not welding. Oh, right. That might help. Try that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well. Is that any better? No, it's still dark. It stays dark long? You well, might like I look at the table and all of a sudden it goes dark. Yeah, no, it's, let me see. Do you want me to take it off? Yeah, take it off. Okay. Yeah. We're trying to adjust the sensitivity of the, uh, the delay time sensitivity. So. Like I that. look at the table and I guess the reflection from the light. Exactly, let's is, try that, it's okay. a little less. I'm having the same problem. Whenever you weld something, it like pulls the material because it's hotter on right. that side. So at this point, should I be like doing a, a, a star pattern tacking, or uh, is well, it safe to tack all the way around? I definitely Sorry. would do what you've done, which is tack here and there because it's going to pull this way and yeah. pull this way. Yeah. So it might compensate. But should I go across and do a star pattern, or do you think it's safe to pretty much go and just in a in a circular pattern? I think it, I think you'd be safe if we. Weld in, weld in, weld in, weld in. That's just my gut feeling. Because okay. then this way, you, each one of your uprights is going to go, er, er, and then yeah. it'll, all, it'll I mean, all work itself out. That's what I did at home. But since I have a, I, I, I never get to work around other welders, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to pick your brain while I have the opportunity. I think it looks perfect. This is exactly what I would do. This old Tony does a real good explanation about shrinking metal. If you guys watch this old Tony on YouTube, yeah. in one of his latest videos, he talks and explains what happens when metal shrinks right after you weld it. It all pulls in, so you have to give yourself some options. You can't just put weld and expect it to be perfect. It'll it's like not compensating for the uh, grain movement in wood. Exactly. You have to understand the material and how it's going to react. Right. You got to understand what's going to happen. to go jump to a grinder, I would do what you're going to do. Okay, because I, yeah. I was putting it under here, but then you can see it. That's what I'm saying. Like, anytime I have the opportunity to weld and grind it clean, yeah, and or, hide it. or at least hide it from, like, ob, this, you know, obvious yeah. view. But 
since you're not going to go jump to a grinder, I would yeah. do what you were going to do. Yeah. I mean, and the tacking is part of this whole thing anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. I'm not, I didn't say that. <laughs> Thanks. What is going on? Oh. The, the trigger is being pulled. <laughs> Jimmy? Hey, Jimmy? The oh. trigger is stuck. Why? I don't know. Oh. Hey, guys, you want to come out the machine? It's okay. The trigger, the trigger was stuck on. I don't have any, uh, okay, there. There. Live TV. Turn it on again, let's see what happens. We're on? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Try that again. That was, I always thought it was me. Just keep an eye on that, make sure the trigger doesn't stay shut on again. Yeah. <laughs> delay time working for you, is it good? What's that mean? The, the screen you get comfortable? Yeah. No. yeah, it's fine, thank you. So now I'm just gonna pump it up so I don't have to wear that tape on. Are these big enough tacks? Yeah, you're doing one on each side. You know what I would do too? I would flip it back over once you get those tacks. Oh, I do. And put it yeah. on the bottom? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, and it's just easier to not weld up. Then with, with tacks, sometimes personally when it's either me or I'm, I'm guiding somebody else that's welding, I say, count to like three, one thousand. Go one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. That's you know, a big you, tack? Or two. Or two. Okay. Two, one thousand. So they're all consistent. Yeah. I like that method, Jimmy. You're a pro. Yep, this is the way it just keeps you in there for a minute longer. It's like keeping the screws in a straight line if you're doing, you know? Oh, excuse me. Um, we are going to try to wrap it up. Okay. Um, just for right now, just so we can take a, take a break, give everyone a break. Yep. April? Yes. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to give everybody a break. Okay. All right, cool. We're going to come back to this later. We're going to see the finished part. We're going to see how you can have So I'm just curious while yeah, we're, we're yeah. here. So let me show you while we're the, here. The, I have the levers. I have these guys, these levers. So I'm going to have four of them, but essentially it's going to be over here, like a little grenade. And then I have, you see my rings? Here it is. Oh. A little ring where. All right, cool. Very good. All right, so we'll come back and see this finished part. We're good. Thank you for hanging out with us here at Lincoln Booth. We're going to be back later. We're going to take a look at each one of the pieces of furniture as they get developed and as they get cut and made and put together. Join us in a pit. Sure April that Wilkerson black. get her yeah. grenade stool, new trademark yeah. item from April. Get ready to weld yeah, up the final I'll, piece I'll get here. To that. I'm just looking the at the back lever first to make sure that it's. She's just getting it clamped up yeah. before doing her welds. This thing is super cool. Plasma cut. Really awesome design. Very impressive stuff. Especially from a new welder like April. What are you guys talking about over there, John? Give us the play oh, John. So uh, she's trying to hide the weld um, that she's doing on the lever, so just so it looks aesthetically pleasing. So she's uh, adjusting it. And me being a little taller, I'm trying to give her as much help as I can. <laughs> so this thing is so cool. And here she what goes. A, what a great design. Tacking in the first weld. Oh, that's a nice tack. The golf clapping. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna tack it because I don't want it to come through on the C. Because now, because before, I was, I was actually welding it back here. And it wouldn't come through on the seat. But I think that'll be fine. So welding, that's all aluminum. Yeah. And when you weld aluminum, they actually make that. Yeah, right. They're not broken yet, so I don't have any dex. What's that? Is it gross? I'm a heathen. I'm a heathen. <laughs> Darn it. That tack is right in my way. Well, they're brand new welding gloves, if that matters. But it, if I'm being honest, it doesn't. It wouldn't matter if they were <laughs> new or not, <laughs> because I do it in my shop all the time. <laughs> huh? I'm just trying to line up this second group of levers with the other one. And I'm working with these vice grips that are, of course, manual adjusting. And they're just uh, kind of a bear. What's that? Yeah, I try to, but it doesn't, uh, so the tack is right in my way, so it really takes the uh, gripping force of these vice in order to squeeze it where I want it. What you need? I need to I need to get down this this tack some. Do we have any any sort of abrasive that I can use here? This, not grinding. Just like sand it. Yeah, it's just right right in my way for putting this together. Do we have any sort of like uh, abrasive that I can use? Yeah, because that tack's just going to push out the sleever so much that it looks bad. You see, I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but what I'm trying to do is get this lever. What I did is I welded together some material in between them to space them apart, and now I'm using the upright as the spacer in between the two groups. But where I placed this tack was not smart, and so now it's, it's pushing this so far out that it's just messing up my spacing is all. So I just need to grind down that tack a little bit. What's that? You can also notch the lever if you need to. Nah, just, that tack's easy. I mean, I have a flap disc. Can I just, eh, real quick? Maybe, that's the hardest thing to so used to work well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh? You have like hell on Instagram or got like In the blue? In the aqua blue. Hmm. She's what? Oh yeah? Cool. Hey, let's go meet her. <laughs> oh, I can use a Dremel, but I can't use a grinder? It's like a two seconds.
that looks like a grenade. It's upside down right now, but you can see the, I'm welding on the lever right now. I don't know if you want to pop any of these on. No, I just need the attachment and spawn. Nah. Okay, so in terms of die grinding. Uh, yeah, like one of these wheels would be fine. Thank you. Or I have these. I mean, all of them would work. I mean, something, I, it's just a tack, so I'm just going to use one of these. I was just going to use this little Puma stone. Actually, I don't own a Dremel. Come with a little tool, a little tightening tool. Is there a little tightening tool in there? Oh, I see it. It's here. Just gotta open up my eyeballs. Whoop, whoop. No, it's 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 right there. I think I think this will be fine, guys. If it doesn't work, then I'll switch it up. What's that? Yeah, if it doesn't work, I'll switch it up, but I think this should be fine. Oh, yeah. Thank you. okay but it really is gonna take forever we have one of those um well i can use this one what's that it open. I would love a water. I think I left mine at lunch.
gonna be putting on this welded ring. I actually cut out a flat piece uh, that looks like this, but I just think this uh, round one looks a lot cooler, even though it has a different sheen to it. So then what I did is to attach this to the lever is I got a J bolt and I just cut it off with a bandsaw. So now I'm gonna be attaching this. And of course, since the welded ring is attached, you have to weld it like this or you have to put it on the J-bolt before welding the, uh, the bolt in place. Get the alignment where I want it. Shit. Put on my gloves before I get the position down. These are brand new welding gloves, and so I don't have a lot of dexterity yet, which is why I prefer to, why I keep taking them off. on it's a stool that looks like a grenade thank you if you give me one second I'll turn it around for you Ta -da! thank you thank you yeah, the lever didn't come out exactly good this time. I changed up my process for putting it on and I shouldn't have, but that's okay. Is that a program you downloaded? You What's that? Is that a program you downloaded or you programmed yourself? No, I designed it myself. You did? Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I designed it in SketchUp and then uh, exported it to a DXF and then they cut it on the Torchmate over there. Yeah. I'll be getting one of those in January. Really? Yeah. Lucky dog? Give me one second, I want to put on a few more tacks. I can get my hand over here. Okay. Give me some ideas now what I can do with it. Oh yeah? Well don't make this, because this one's mine. <laughs> You want to take a look, sir? You, you want to take a look, sir? You'll, you'll, you'll send me that, that file. No, I'm, I'm actually going to be uh, going in. I don't know if it's a copyright or a trademark or, or a patent, but I'm going to I'm going to be uh, looking to produce these. So I'm not I'm not trying to give away the file. I got you. Well, you got enough work in it. Makes sense. What's that? I said that makes sense. If you put that much work in something, you might as well get credit for it. Yeah, I mean, because this is a small version, like an end table-ish sort, but I'm gonna make bar stools, kitchen table, you know, so kind of scale it up. I see that. That's it, I'm done, Noah, or Norm. You a fabricator? I teach in college. Okay. Yes, I teach welding. Lincoln has been a big supporter of our program. Oh, yeah. They're big on education. They are, yeah. We do a lot of uh, update training for the instructors in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I've gone to the spider one or every time they have a workshop, I'll go to it. I've been to the welding school. Very cool. Yeah. I haven't done that yet. It looks good. So this is the finished grenade. Sorry, we're rolling right there. Can they, can they see it? Can we fold this down a little bit? Yeah, push out. There you go. Watch the gun on the side. Yeah, it's good. Finished grenade. Artist and her look. Yeah. So I changed up the lever, how I put on the lever, and I wish I wouldn't have, because it didn't come out as clean. But uh, it can still come out, still looking like a grenade. Oh, about 
three days. It's, it's, it's a tricky design because the proportions have to look right. So I just really did it by eye. I started off with the height because of course it had to stay within 18 inches for this purpose, for Jimmy's table. And then that uh, I found the top diameter first and then worked my way down. But getting the, the bulbous shape kind of just right. And I actually think that I could have gone a little bit more fluffy in the center. But yeah, I think it looks all right. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Boom. Okay, so I think that's gonna be a great What's that? We are out, guys. Welcome back to Facebook Live. We are so that live on Facebook. Left. And Okay. And we are live on Facebook still. We are cutting. We're cutting out what is that? The American flag. Cutting stuff. We're still cutting parts. What you see here are parts for Zach's table. Zach's gonna make a big C clamp. We talked about Zach's parts earlier, but let's go take a look and see what Doug is doing. Doug is putting his chair together right now. Oh. Oh. You guys remember earlier? You guys remember earlier we were talking about April's chair? Here's April's thing. April's grenade. I like how she's got these four parts all pinched together that give it a little bit of a... It takes it out of that squarish look. It pinches it nice. So we got a nice seat grenade there from April. Let's go take a look and see what Doug's doing. Hello, Doug. Hey, Jimmy. You're live on Facebook. Hey, Say guys. hello to the world. Hey, world. And tell everybody your channel. My channel is RetroWell.com. RetroWell.com. And what are we making? So I am making a chair. I have made one side so far. And one back. And one back. This is going to go on. Here, like that. <laughs> I, I just... Kind of loosen it. It's going to fall. Ah, oh, there we go. We got it. Let me hold that. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot. I got it. I'm impervious to heat. So you, you've been practicing your tick? About six months. You've been working on your tick for six months. You're working on the square wave. Tell us what settings you're using on the square wave. So I'm on, this is 14 inch steel, and I am setting it at 115. And I'm dialing it in, and I have my pulse setting on at point, 0.7. Right. So you, on, a, on ticking, since I'm a newbie, pulse is my best friend. Pulse keeps you from melting through. It's like it hot, cold, kind of hot, cold, speed. hot, cold. Is that it helps you kind of stay consistent. It's like a drum beat. So right. when it cuts off, I know to move forward. When it comes on, right. it cuts off. I know to, so it's kind of a help with your time. Really? Yep. I've never used the pulse like that. Yep. So the pulse, you, know, you, you can set your, your power and you put on the, pap, the pedal for the, for the juice, the right. amps, and then the pulse, the, your TIG torch will pulse the power. Right. So it's automatically, you kind of know when to move forward as you're right. going. Boom, 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 like a heartbeat. So I use pulse on this. Right. So this will be the back, it goes right here. Oh yeah. Making the other side now. I've got it clamped down to the table, and I'm, I'm tack welding it. Right. I'm going to undo these, and I'll flip it, and I'll tack weld it the other side, and then I'm going to tig up my beads. Right on. Now you're tigging with how thick is your steel on your tig wire? I'm using the thin wire right there. That's 16. Yep. That's it. And how's your method? Is it good? I'm practicing that. I am the I, worst I kinda, at this. I kind of go back and forth from doing this and dabbing. So it just depends on the, in the corner of the angle. I just keep moving it in until I'm holding like a half inch piece. <laughs> and I just, it's like, now it's like a test of how much heat I can take on my fingertips. Yeah, so I mean, I've been trying different methods. I've seen on Instagram the guy do this. Oh yeah, that's cool. Which is kind of cool. And then I've been doing this. Yep. Sometimes that depends if you want to use it in these two fingers or in here. So just, you gotta have to kind of try different things to get your, right. find your comfort zone. Right. And some other times, if it's me to get in the tight corner, I just dab it. Yep. So different methods for different applications. And I noticed on your uh, on your Instagram lately that you you did a little Instagram on sharpening your tungsten. I did. So I bought a diamond wheel, diamond coated wheel, right. diamond wheel on uh, McMaster's, right. and uh, it helped me get the wide angle. Right. So I have a little attachment I bought to make sure I get the right angle. And you're just sticking it in your drill and putting it yep, into the... Yep, so I get a real nice sharp point. It's like sharpening a pencil. Right. 
And uh, do you find you get a, a better arc if you... I do. It has to be real sharp for me. I get the yeah. better arc. I personally like it sharp. I think I actually have one right down here that's sharp. Oops, sorry. Let's see. Yeah, there's one. And talk a little bit, you're running with red. What is the red? So, on steel, I use the red tips. Do we know what that is? Here, can you see that? I don't know if you can zoom in. Is that a red tip? Yeah. yeah. Do we know what red is? I should know this, but I don't know it. Where's Jody? <laughs> Jody will tell us exactly what this is. JD! JD! Come here! What does it mean when the tungsten is red? Yeah, I mean, what what is what is the distinction? Thoriated. It's got thorium. Thoriated. Yeah, it's the type of uh, additive that they added to the tungsten right. to give it certain properties. It's just a little bit. Right. And then what is the difference between this and gray, for instance, or blue? Gray would be seriated. It's just cerium. I don't, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Right. But it's just a, just something else that they add to it in the process of making it, which right. gives it a little different properties reacting with the electricity as it's right. working. And Andrew's here. Tell us a little bit of the difference between these. Like what? Why would you choose one over the other? So, no. <laughs> Sorry, JD. Okay. Sorry, JD. Oh, I'm good, picking you out, man. No, it's all good. You know more than I do. <laughs> so, serrated has always been taught as you use that for your your carbon steel and your stainless steel. That's the red? That's the red. That's that that's a oh sorry, thoriated. Thoriated is where you use it for your carbon steel and your stainless steel. Okay. Uh, it was also taught that you would use a green or a pure tungsten for when you were welding aluminum. Since times have changed and now we have better technology, namely inverter technology, we're talking about more of uh, you, this is namely used for those carbon steels and stainless steels. Can you use it on AC uh, for welding aluminum and your magnesium? Yes, you can. Is it the best possible choice? No. Right. Uh, what you're going to see Will it is, compromise your weld if you... Yeah, what will happen is you'll actually start to see this uh, start to split. It just can't handle that uh, DC ele uh, electropositive for while you're welding on AC. Right? Okay. It switches that cycle and now you're on DC electropositive for that millisecond. So it starts stainless to have, and... And stainless and steel. Stainless and carbon steel. Now, if you go to a serrated, which you were talking about earlier, that's a blue, a gray tungsten. Oh, gray, gray tungsten. That's more of it has a serrated added to it as an alloying element. It allows you to use it on either AC or DC electro uh, okay. negative. Uh, there's other tungstens like lanthanated, the blue one you had just mentioned. Yeah. There's also a e, um, E3, which is the purple, and there's also a light green, which is chartreuse. All of those are what they call multi-strike multi-purpose tungsten so you can multi-strike them on any process it'll hold the tip a little bit better as well as use them on different polarities right so as a beginner just going to do some general purpose work what do you suggest i would suggest investing in the serrated that's probably your your go-to for if you're that's the red doing, what colors yeah, would that be that would be gray serrated gray. is going to be gray gray so gray okay but like let's just kind of break down for, for newbie so yep. red would be good for steel stainless yep red is namely for steel and stainless and then purple Purple, your purple, your E3, yeah. uh, your uh, blue, which is your lanthanated, and your gray, which is your serrated, are all multi-purpose, multi-strike. So that would be good to use for aluminum? That would be uh, good for aluminum and or stainless steel okay. and carbon steel. Right, multi-purpose. Right on. Yep. It's always a mystery when you start. You don't know where to get these answers. I guess you could go to YouTube. You could. Maybe uh, <laughs> weldingtipsandtricks.com or something, yeah. or lincolnelectric.com. Yeah, exactly. All right. Right on. Cool, brother. Right on, man. Thank you. Not a problem. All right, we're going to weld a little bit. Okay. We've got to put the hood up. about your cup before you get started. Hold that up to the so camera. this is a little stubby cup, stubby kit that I'm using. And, you know, it's just a personal choice. This is what I like to use just because it's easier for me to kind of get in corners. And yeah. this is the number six that I'm using. Right on. Okay. okay. So when you buy the, uh, the Lincoln torch, it comes with a seven. And all those work well. It's just, again, personal choice.
Toyota Tetra. What are the settings on him? What is his voltage? It's uh, 200. 200. He turned down a 215, I mean 115 and then a full setting of 0.7. 115 and a pulse of 0.07. 0.7. There we go. And Doug is running with a foot pedal. But you give, if you, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, when you have 115, you can, you can go anywhere from up to 115. That's correct. So when you're stepping on your foot pedal, your foot pedal is like the gas pedal of a car, yeah. and your, your, idle, or your, your governor is 115 volts, or That's amps the rather. Out. That's the maxed out. Maxed out 115 amps. So I can lift up, lift up on the pedal, and then the amp brings the foot down. Nice. You know, it helps if I have my readers on. You need mine? Well, mine? Oh, you got yours. <laughs> I know the feeling. You're like, God damn, why is this screen so dirty? <laughs> it's not dirty, you just can't see what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, we're going we're gonna to try that again because I could not see. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. Everybody doing out there? What are you having fun? Good to hear. It's fine. <laughs> you need to come over this side, or you get there. You know what they say with live TV? Never do welding and never have animals. So can you actually see a weld when I'm welding? Bit? Not really. In this angle, definitely not. So. Get as crazy as you want. You're fine. I'm not going for the puddle. important thing though is that you practice all the time. Yeah, that's great, dude. Beautiful. Did you make your chair yet? I didn't cut mine. I'm not even making chair. Get on him. I did. Alright, ready? Here we go. Put the pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal.
Alright, ready? I'm gonna do this one now. One, Three D. Finish up, sign out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, when do we go three D? What do you mean three D? When do we go three D? Uh, oh. uh, soon. Very soon. So next, I've got to mount on the front and then the back, and then I'm going to put in the back. Right on. Start to look like a chair. Right on, very good. All right, cool, we'll come back and join us later on. Doug's gonna get his chair put together. I'm gonna actually put my table base together very soon. I think I'm next in line. So once Doug is done, I'm jumping in with the MIG. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Fabtech. Thank you. Okay. It moving. We, we're, we're not going to move it until after the demo. Oh, no, that big red button again. Yeah. You'll see a blue arc. Yeah, I just don't know where I want to go. I would go into the system. Where's that? Straight in front of you. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. go. go oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Oh, my goodness. How funny. What's he welding? 
gonna trip over anything. I don't even know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> You're all right. You like it, April? Yeah, this is um, trippy and really awesome. I really want to play a shooter up game with this, you know? What do I do? So we're gonna put you in a new environment. Okay. Well, I have to go back that way? Uh, right? Yeah, if you wanna jump onto that. I changed where you are now, look behind you. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm messing up. Where do you want me to go? You can choose whatever you want. Uh, how about let's do uh, the H-frame system in the middle. Okay. H-frame, that one's really cool. Let's do it. Ooh, let's look around, see what's going on. Oh, it's all the same warehouse? Okay, let's go this way. <laughs> So people can see what my goggles are seeing? Yeah, you see everything that you see. Oh, that's so cool. It's so funny because I can feel a cord at my feet, but I can't see it. <laughs> this is so cool. Don't fall over. No, I'm not going to. But it's so funny because I can feel the cord at my feet, but it, but then I can't see it. But then this machine's swinging at me, but it's not. Oh, it's trippy, guys. I like this. Hey, so what is this doing exactly? Oh, I see. Okay. What do you mean? The, oh, that's... Don't do that now. <laughs> How funny! It's a complete mind twist. Back to back. What's what? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's people in the walls. It's, it's all in my head. Oh, wait, we're this way. Alright, so now if you go to the one, on the one of the ones on the right side, these are our much larger systems. Yeah. They're not animated, but uh, you'll get to see some, some more tooling and stuff. So yeah, go to that one. Okay. So these are going to be much larger, so if you want to jump to the middle of one of those, yeah. kind of around and see what's going on. Wow, how detailed! It's so funny, it's like I'm, I'm almost hesitant to cross down. <laughs> ah, this is so cool! Whoa, easy! Wow! So does somebody model this? Okay. Yeah, you really have to do, you have to move slow. What detail, yeah, how really amazing. Oh, oh, too far. I want to go to, oh, there they are. cool little Easter eggs in these models. I don't know, like a platypus just like randomly put on. Yeah. Oh, is there a platypus somewhere? <laughs> How fun. Oh, it would be so cool if I could like open the door virtually. So can I get inside there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. In real life. In real life. So that's the big fume casting system. Awesome. Yeah, I'm inside. <laughs> oh, cool. Man, how neat. Okay, what do I do now, guys? Bad. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Wrong one. There you go. There you go. Is 
So yeah, you just hold the button down, select the blue dot, and then just let go and you'll jump to that, that spot. You can go like inside the system if you like. I didn't jump over there. There you go. And you can go inside too. Do I, oh, if I just push the button? Yeah, yeah, right that button down, like, That's kind of freaky. So you can look around and see all the equipment. Whoa. This is freaky, man. I'm like walking around inside of this thing. What a trip. You can see what you're seeing right now. It, it's weird, you can like reach out and touch it. What a freak. You know, it's funny, I was actually like, I've been in this building. <laughs> this is the old, uh, what was that old plant this thing used to be? It's now it's their robotics division. Like, they won't let me go very far. You know, you jump through the system and there'll be an orange dot. Jump through the system? Yeah, jump all the way through. Like there? Yep, straight through it. Whoa, going. whoa. And then look right. Yeah, uh, right there. Whoa. So go to that. Dude. Choose one on the, uh, over on the left side. This is like we're having a party in the uh, robotics division. <laughs> go to one over on the left side. Go to the one on the left side? Yeah, like the eight, yeah, there you go. All right. So these ones are gonna move on you. So if you jump in the middle, oh. they're gonna move at you. Man, I can't. I keep wanting to walk. It looks so real. Think about the VR walk. Man, I think you should do this for all the machines. We could be welding right now. It's. It, whoa! It just took my legs off. You know, actually, I have a water jet. Um, I have a water jet at home, and like one of the first things that I did was I accidentally like got in the way of the arm and it pretty much knocked me off into the next room. Oh no, it's gonna be again! <laughs> Alright, I'm getting out of this zone. Oh, don't move! Just look. Oh, oh! Oh, I can't make it! Here it is. Whoa, man, this is craziness. Let's go see the robot. This thing is trippy. Feel like I'm gonna get hit again. Wow. This is really impressive. Man, that is crazy. Dude, it seems like it's so real. I mean, I've heard of like OEMs, you know, doing, um, you know, like designers, they'll design yeah. like an interior, yeah. design a car, they can look inside of it, buildings. Right. Yeah, so the idea with this, uh, design the cell before all the steel starts going together, and make sure that the customer is good with it, they like oh, yeah, it, sure. their ergonomics are good, and then sign off, and then we start building. It's so crazy that I've actually been to that building. What was the old factory? What did it used to At be? At Lincoln? Yeah. The robotics building used to be... Up in Cleveland? Yeah. That room, that building, oh, that was a, uh, it's in the, it's a robotics building. I what? forgot, it used to be yeah, the automation uh, building. That's a real building, I've been in there. <laughs> so it's crazy, like they've, they set up those cells and that's yeah. where they custom build them. Nice. Pretty neat. Pretty wild. Yeah, it's freaky. <laughs> you're good though, you're good. Thank you. Man, that was oh, fun. Thank you. Well Man, that was nuts. Hey, I'm Jimmy, by the way. Hey, Jimmy. You're a bike maker? Uh, bikes and cars. Right on. Yeah. What do you do? I make shit. I just make furniture and stuff, but I want to do it. Okay. Yeah. I want to do cool stuff. Well, the furniture has its things, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's nice to make stuff for your house. Yeah. To make something that, you know, you can use that the women actually appreciate. My whole life I've been making them like a small shop, but I've been That's watching... I, I, I must confess, I don't know you personally, but I've been watching the likes of Jesse James. Sure. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Paul Cox and from Brooklyn. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, you know, Paul's a cool dude. And uh, I've always wanted to be like, Paul's like my yeah, big inspiration when it comes to that stuff. Yep. I just never had a shop to do it in. Now I finally have a shop to pick it up. And I'll probably, probably start experimenting with a bike first. Yeah, bikes, bikes don't take a lot of space. They're obviously a lot smaller. Yeah. And, you know, you can do it within a, a, a reasonable like area, doesn't cost as much. Yeah. You can reach to the other side of the bike, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So 
Yeah. One of these days I'll get jammed yeah, on something like that. Yeah, I got it all. I got a. I bought a brand new in 2003 low rider. Okay. Probably. Yeah. It's been customized a little bit, but yeah. I'm just gonna get myself a sponsor and just take the part. Yeah, sports shows are fun. Around with it. Yeah. yeah. So, one of these days. Yeah, sports shows are fun for sure. Are you Rhino. here for them? Or are you? Are you? Are you here for just anybody? Just um, I was uh just floating around, checking right. it out. Yeah. Are you doing any demos or anything? Nope. Right I just came from SEMA. Oh, right, so right I had a week. I had a week out there, which is... Right. Where, it's like a crowd. Are we still on mic? We're still yeah. on mic. <clears throat> where are you based? Atlanta. Oh, okay. Georgia. I gotta, I gotta check you out. Yeah, we just had... I was uh, just telling somebody, like, you know, to go from the SEMA show, where you have, like, every crazy, like, engine, wheels, tires, <laughs> all the cars, all the OEMs, then... You know, like three days later, tops pop into Chicago, and you've got all the tools that built all yeah. those machines. You know what tools I mean? Like, insane. it's pretty crazy. Giant machines over there, insane. It's mind blowing. I'm, I'm running a plasma table, so I'm making like dozens and cool weird stuff. You know, the, that same machine over there. Yeah. I got a 440, so I'm experimenting, experimenting with a lot of cutting metal. I just saw a seven-inch thick piece of steel, like this wide, roll into a hoop that was like <laughs> six, seven feet in right. diameter. Roll. That's crazy. Seven inches thick. Yeah. It's, it's insane. insane. I don't know how so. to get the electric in this place to work. I can't even get the electric in my little barn to work. Can you imagine? Oh my God, this place but, is nuts. Well, it's great to meet you. I gotta right follow on. up and, and yeah. do some research on you. Thank Sounds you, Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Right on. Enjoyed it. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. All right, you up? Yeah. Alrighty. What are we doing? Gonna, uh, take the hat. I can, I can put the hat oh, yeah. on the counter for you. Yeah. Alright, so this is going to go on your head. we got some side straps here that are going to tighten around your head. <coughs> Word. Just make sure it's right in front of your eyes and then we'll, we'll get the side straps for you. So go ahead and put that cool. on. Uh. <laughs> oh, shit. It's tight, but not that tight. So we'll no, it feels perfect. It's actually good. Yeah, yeah. It's good? good, yeah. You sure? I just okay. pulled what's left of my hair. All right, so uh, come toward me a little bit. We got to, right there. Right on. All right, so is my zipper up? All right, so we're gonna have these two uh, these two controllers. One's gonna go on your left. One's gonna go on your right. Just go ahead and grab onto them. Left. Now everything you do is gonna be with that your right thumb. There's a big pad right there. Yep, that that's, one. That's gonna be everything you do. So if you look up at the big screen, there's gonna be all these different systems. So you're gonna select one of these different types of systems. So a uh, good one might be in the middle. That H frame system with tooling. I touched so the button? Just, yeah, just hold down the button. Woo, just that's cool. It. There you go. So now you're in the system. So you'll hold that button again, you'll see a big blue dot. And wherever that blue dot lands, that's where you jump to. So you can be right there, you peeking in at the robot. And you can go into the system too, if you want. Can I get my hand cut off? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Jimmy, your mic is live, so. Check, check, check. What am I looking at? What happens here? So you're seeing all of the tooling design or whatever the customer may be. So we'll oh my God. before we start building the process. Um, they'll approve of it and then we'll, we'll start. Am I looking at something that would do like uh, com compression welds or uh, Just weld. contact it weld? Could be, it could be anything. It could be a variety of things. So right on. So on the back side there, that's where the robots are welding. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. That switches out that part. And as an operator, I'd put in a new part. Yeah. Oh, I see what's happening here. Oh, very cool. And you guys make this? We make this, yeah, we make the robotic cell. <laughs> it's incredible. How many of these a week do you sell? What's that? How many a week do these do you sell? Oh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying it's such a specialized thing. It's so incredible. Yeah, so this is just one of the styles. So if you jump back out uh, to the front of the cell, we'll take you into another one. So uh, use that blue dot, that blue dot again. There you go. And over to your right. Go turn around. Yeah, there you go. So now you're back at the main screen. So All right. we'll do a uh, do one of the ones on the right. These are going to be a lot more elaborate. Uh, like one of these guys. Hydroforming system. Yeah. There you go. Oh, hydroforming. I so love that. Going to be a lot of tooling. A lot of things going into this. A lot involved. You guys do hydroforming? Am I already there? We do. Uh, hold down on it for about three seconds. Okay. There you go. So now this one, you can go right into the middle. You can crouch down. You can see all the tooling around it. Oh my God. This one's get very very elaborate. Oh my god. I'm gonna turn around and get unwound. Where can I see something get hydroformed? 
Uh, these, these are uh, still processes right now. Oh. We don't have these ones animated. I want to get hydroformed. <laughs> wow. Whoop, I got hit in the face with a piece of metal. What am I looking at outside? What ocean is that? It looks like a beach. Is that like some place nearby? It's, it's whatever beach you want it to be. That's not like Lake Erie? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what's that? So we're in a different zone now, I think this is our uh, laser. laser welding? What does that mean? Oh shit, I just got hit in the face with a piece of metal. This is fun. So uh, yeah, one of the good ones, uh, maybe the, the H-frame on the left side. Yeah, there you go, H-frame system. This one, go ahead and jump right to the front, right there. So this one you'll be able to see the robot kind of doing a thing on the, on the back side. Oh yeah. Is this the same thing, like if I was an operator, I'd be changing the part? You're exactly right, yep. That's and then step out of the way and then remove and change the part and then while it's doing this thing over there. Yep, you got it. Wow. And then if you go out on the right side of the system, uh, outside of it, oh yeah, take one more bounce around, and you'll be able to see some of the some of the money. Yeah. Yeah, 450. That's a 450 like MIG, so to speak. Uh, yeah, power wave R 450. Wow. This thing. This controls the robot? Let's get you over a little bit. The cord's getting short. Oh, up this way a little bit. <laughs> there you go. What's that? That's just in the next cell, so it's a, a quick transition. So that'll take you into a new one. Oh, what is that? So that is one of our Ferris wheel position piece. That's for like doing the truck bed? That's what's on display? Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Does like Caterpillar or any of these companies run something like this? Uh, so these are for some smaller parts. These would be, um, you know, you could you could put a much smaller part. I mean, basically whatever part would fit on that turntable. So if they yeah. have parts that would fit on them, I could see them running something like this. Yeah. Right on. There's also bigger spans and sweeps in that Ferris wheel positioner, so it can go wider. Yeah. And larger parts on it, and the system just expands with it. Yeah. So you just move the rails yep. wider. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that, you get a better payload capacity. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Can I have a robot welder to like spell words? Yes. Can I get one of those yellow things to like write things in script and stuff? What's that? Yeah, we actually have a letter program on our little robot system. Oh, really? To yeah. run to like run typefaces and stuff? Yep. Oh my goodness. I like that. I want one. <laughs> Get you a little education style. It'll do it for you. <laughs> That's so much. They have to be good. They have to be. Right. They have to hold. What are you under an impact? I am making a C clamp forces for your table. Tell the world who you are. What you do? Uh, my name is I mean, uh, my, start your <laughs> name is Zach. Uh, my uh, my YouTube channel website ZH Fabrications. Right on. Uh, and you do wood and metal. I do uh, wood and metal, blacksmithing, a little bit of leather working. And let me ask you, why why did you start in the middle? Well, the challenge on this one is trying to get those two 90 degree bends. If I, I would have loved to have done this in one, uh, 
one run of steel here in the center, but the issue would have been is trying to get those corners in the exact proper spot. So by doing with it, limited means here at the show. Exactly. Right. So, but by doing it in the middle, uh, I only have to worry about one corner at a time. Right. And uh, the seam here is going to be below where it's visible. So. All oh, right. Now. Perfect. Yeah. Very good. Okay. I had a feeling that's why, but I just, just wanted to hear you explain yeah. it. Really nice. So, uh, what brings you to FabTech? Lincoln Electric <laughs> brings me to FabTech. Uh, Are you having fun? Absolutely. It's, it's incredible. Um, We've, there's been like a backlog here. We're all trying to get to the welding table space to do our thing, and, and you I, I got fought here. my way in, yeah. He fought his way in. Yep, exactly. But, uh, fought and clawed his way in. What's that? You fought and clawed your way I in. I did. <laughs> it's the fish ladder, the welding booth. Right on. Yeah. What, have you seen anything here at FabTech that is like blowing your mind? Because I know you spent some time wandering around. We couldn't find you. Um, yeah. Skynet is here. It's live. The what robots. Is, what is Skynet? Terminator 2. What is Terminator? The giant. Oh, they're really here? <laughs> it looks I like know. it. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, uh, you mean like the, the like the five the axis big, robots? The big automated robots. Yeah, they seem incredible. to be everywhere. I just wonder what they're doing. I have no they're idea. like moving things everywhere, but I don't see them actually doing it. They're taking over the world. But like, there's all these one arm robots. What are they doing? I don't see any of them welding no or giving out stickers or brochures. Not, they should no. at least have one of them like giving out brochures when you walk when you walk up or I agree. checking badges or something. But, hey, what's up, dangerous. So you want to weld a little bit? I'll watch. Sure. Right, right now, up. right now, I'm just kind of tacking this in place. What um, happens here? I'm going to use a bandsaw to cut this all flush. And actually, we can walk around. I'll give the give kind of the rundown of how this is going to fit together. Give it a little bit more content. All right. So yeah, essentially, I'll grab this one since it's more manageable. So, there's a couple more pieces, but this is going to sit like this, essentially, the table is going to sit in between there. So, so the clamp, the C-clamp is going to be on each end of the wood? Correct. Right. Yeah. So, okay. And the idea is that will hold it in place. So. Right. That's that's the plan. Right on. All right. What do we have to do next? What's next? Uh, next step. Like I said, I'm just kind of trying to tack this into place right now. Uh, it's pretty close here, and then I'm gonna try and get this other band band section in here. And once I have that done, the clamp will be finished, and then I'll weld it to the nut wire. And uh, are you gonna put a pad here, like a little? Yeah. Oh, he's uh, cutting them out of quarter inch. Yeah, we're gonna cut that out of the quarter inch on the. Uh, Watch what you do. You're going to be using a 210 MP power MIG, 230 inches per minute, 18 volts, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. How much were these? What's that? How much were these? Ten dollars each. And what is the thread? What is the thread uh, pitch? I think it's like 13. Those are inch and a half diameter. Inch and a half, 13. My microphone popped off. Can I just drape it? You like how I throw that word thread pitch around? I'm learning. Absolutely. I'm learning my machine terminology. I'm trying to figure out where I can... Uh, my microphone came on down oh, here. Came my, clip, my clip is, is MIA. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's in your beard. It could be. Ah, look at that. Where'd you find that? Oh my god. That guy's amazing. I think that is the most amazing thing in the whole show that he found that microphone for. Absolutely. Alright, you will, I'll watch. Alright. Thank you. Lincoln's fume extractor right here. If you live in a, if you have a shop that's small, confined space, you should get yourself a fume extractor. It's not a vacuum cleaner, it's a fume extractor. <laughs> Everybody comes to my shop and goes, I didn't know Lincoln made a vacuum cleaner. That's really cool. Yeah. 
Like they still don't make vacuum cleaners. Seam extractors. All right, so we got to pound this down just a little bit in the center. JD's recommendation, and it's very versatile. Yeah. And it doesn't burn through as quick if you're doing sheet metal or Absolutely. 16 gauge. Yep. Yeah, if you're trying to close up any sort of holes or anything, it's uh, you're chasing, if you find yourself chasing holes in your work, it's usually a good indicator that you should step down on wire size. Right. So it's funny, chasing holes. Yeah. Well, one of the best things, is this thing still, okay. I'm having bad luck with microphones today. Okay, there it is. Okay, there it is. Um, I think one of the best things that I did when I started welding was just get a box of washers right. and weld all the holes shut. Oh, that's funny. Because if you can if you can weld all the holes shut in a box of wa uh, washers, then then you can pretty much fix all your mistakes. So. Non zinc coated. Correct. Yeah. Make sure that uh, you're not welding on zinc washers. Yeah. The fumes are not good for you. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always chasing holes in. in uh, I'm always chasing holes in the 16 gauge tube I've been using lately. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting better at not burning them through, but when I do, it's just managing that puddle. It's like I jump from yeah. one side of the hole to the other. I have what I call my scribble method. Uh huh. And it sounds really bad, but I go, I jump across the hole, I go, yeah. and it's like leave it a bit, leave it a bit, leave it a bit, leave it a bit, leave it yeah. a bit, and then it meets in the middle. Yeah. And it's called my scribble welding. The scribble method. welding. You gotta I try like, that scribble welding. I like the, uh, if I'm running a continuous speed, I do the crescent, which is kind of like right. half moons. Just yeah. I try that and it always drips inside the yeah. pipe. I said, let me just scribble. Yeah, absolutely. 
sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting director notes. Yeah, so when you go, make sure we let everybody know about tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, right on. Sure. on. Text me. Text me while we're talking. Hold on, I'm getting notes from the director. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we gonna go to uh, oh the lights are turning off here at the uh, Fab Tech 2017? Yeah. It's the end of day one. Tomorrow I am going to create my table. We're gonna get a chance to see the finished C clamp bench. We got Douglas over there. We got Big Jim Bollinger working with with Douglas over there. And come back tomorrow. We're gonna be live all day tomorrow on Facebook Live, LinkedIn Electric, Fab Tech 2017. If you like this, text me. Let me know what you need more of. You guys can find me on Instagram. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. What's going on, everybody? I'm John Malecki. Welcome to Fabtech Day 2. We are here with the Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop. What's up, everybody? At Working home? on his stool for the uh, conglomerate to rest the build. So, if you can hop in there. Yeah. What do we, uh, what do no we got going on, Are you on, too Johnny? short? So, I did this stool seat at home made of walnut and maple. Did a little power carving. It's nice and dished out, if you can see that. Turned out great. And then I'm building my base here, which... You know, it's not not my best work, but uh, I'm okay with it. It'll yeah. look good once it's ground down and, and <laughs> always coated. Right? <laughs> so your stuff's uh, typically super modern. Yeah. I noticed we got some walnut there. What's that center strip? Maple. Maple. Maple walnut. Classic. Maple. Classic. Cla classic. Classic modern combo. Styling. And I love it. It's got like a little bit of bird's eye in it too, yeah. which was kind of cool. You know? that's, that's pretty sweet. So, you, this um, is all just scraps, man. Where'd you uh, Where'd you get the inspiration for this? Were you Were you pulling just from Pinterest? Anywhere? Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest. Good old Pinterest. Found a stool there. there it was like a bar height stool and kind of change it up yeah. to make it normal table height. I dig it. It looks like a nice piece. I, the design actually could work well for like an end table too. Oh yeah, totally. No, this base, I mean, so the base is really simple. Very easy. Yeah, so the base is really kind of a simple design. Um, so I'll have a plate here at the top to mount to the stool. And uh, but yeah, this would be a cool coffee table. That kind of cantilever look is always, always awesome. Yeah, so, it's pretty hot too. Yeah. I dig it, man. It's very hot actually. I just burnt it's, myself. It's physically it's also literally warm. so hot. That's insane. You <laughs> welded it and it's warm. It is literally hot. Good yeah. stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Did you cut the circle on a bandsaw? How'd we get the I round? did, yeah. So started as a square, planed it down flat, and then I made a little circle cutting jig for my bandsaw. You can see the, the screw hole there and uh, so cut the circle round it over the edges at the router table and then power carved the center with that uh, Arbor Tech turbo plane and then sanded it smooth and man I'm super stoked with how it came out honestly I was not expecting it to be that that good yeah look yeah. sharp you got some nice figuring here yeah a little curl. The bird's eye a little bit of curl yeah some it's, it's, it's nice man wood. it's nice for well sure. done my friend well yeah. done it's air dried walnut so it's got a ton of color variation yeah. which I love and uh, yeah so Wood is really my thing, but uh, I dabble in the metal. So, well, I will you know. stop bothering you and let All you get right, back man. to work here. I appreciate um, it. I think we got what? We got Zach working on some stuff too. So, if you guys don't know, this is Zach from ZH Fabrications working on his, his bench design is pretty sweet. Why don't you tell him about it a little bit? Yeah, so I'm doing, uh, I figured it's a fabrication event, so I wanted to do something that was a uh, fabrication related so uh, I went out to my shop one day and tried to find tools that uh, everybody here is familiar with and uh, amongst them is a seat plant so I decided to do a bench and uh, you can see it over there I don't know if you want to go over there and check yeah we'll walk it out. over but uh, so yeah it's essentially the bench is going to be held in place by a giant C clamp with the uh, some inch and a half all thread and some legs on it yeah dude sweet design I Thank mean it, you. the the second you see it you're like wow it's enormous uh, when it, I mean you look at the C clamp you're like oh and it's custom so it's pretty sweet it's uh you want to go check it out the other half so and then we got this right yep Ugh. so this is the uh... dude one second you just get a pump real quick so, got a few more pieces to fabricate for this i uh, gonna do an inner that's what i'm working on right now is the uh inner channel for the c-clamp then we do some pads here and uh there's a band there's a pad here as well and that's just we're literally going to be able to crank this together, tighten it, and it's going to clamp this 
uh, bench in place. So. That's awesome. So it's a literal functioning clamp. Yes. It has the feet. And then you'll will you tack the um the bottom to set the height and stuff so it doesn't uh, wobble? You can. I what I'm what I'm planning on doing, I don't know what the bag is. Well Smooth. these nuts, these are uh this is inch and a half all thread. And these nuts are ten dollars each <laughs> and they're hefty. Yeah, they, they are. The whole thing's pretty hefty. I'm gonna use that as uh, one Second of the good line. things about this design. I'm, I'll actually put one of these above here, so it'll be self-leveling in the fact that you can lock the uh, the legs in place where you want them to be. Dude, slick design, dude. Real slick. Well, I'll let you get back to work. We got, uh, I think Jimmy got his table put together and mocked up. Why don't we go check that out? Check it out. Jimmy's coming over. Sorry. On. And we got the April grenade. This is literally one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. It shows your Instagram post, bro. So if you guys want to know, it doubles as a growler, and you can just uh, pound it. Just, just fill it up with your, your favorite craft beer. Go to town. What a sweet design. Doug. Sir. So we got Doug from Retro Weld. Wrapped up his chair last night. Why don't you tell us about it a little bit? Yeah, so this is 14 feet steel, and the wood is secure. And I prefabricated this part of my shop before I came here, and I've got all my metal. And, uh, and at the show, what I did is I TIG weld. I've only been TIG welding for about six months, and uh, I'm having a blast doing it, so. Yeah, dude, you got, you got some impressive uh, impressive corner beads in here for just TIG welding for not that long. Not perfect, some are better than others, but yeah. uh, you know, I'm, having, I'm, I'm starting to like TIG welding better than MIG welding, and I've actually been MIG welding for 10 years, so I think that speaks volumes on how short of a timeline I've been welding and how much more fun it is for me. Yeah, watching you go yesterday was impressive, seeing you just you. meticulously and slowly go through the process. Uh, I like the traditional style of the chair, it's pretty cool. Yep, and I pre bit the metal in my shop before I came. I think it's got a good profile. Nice. There's the back. So this, <laughs> how much woodworking do you do though? Because I mean, the seat pan's impressive. <laughs> More metalworking than woodworking. It's uh, it's nice. It's got some good sheen to it. Did you actually do this, or did you just source someone? No, I, I made that myself. It's nice, it was dude. Before I cut it down and then cut the shape out. Well, welcome to the metal and wood world. Thanks, sir. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, man. No. There he is. Oh, you know what? I think it fits in my carry-on. Yeah. Or should I wear it as a chain? It's like a tie. Well, we had some extra room on one of the plates, so I, of course I had to. The narcissist that I am. I had to <laughs> I'm sure it'll find somewhere to hang in the new shop, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's How cool. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm excited. I'm loving it. Getting to meet a lot of good people. Yeah, it's uh, cool. Getting to hop on a couple of the machines, which is big for me. Yeah. Not a big TIG welder. Took a lesson from Andrew here at Lincoln, who's He's a amazing. competition. And then Jody was over there critiquing my stuff, so I was loving it, man. Right on, man. Yeah, he put down a couple cool beats. Have so. you got a chance to, do you, do you plasma cut at all in your shop? Only by hand. Not a, I watch all of your stuff, obviously, with the uh, with the Torchmate uh, awesome machine, but I haven't really got my mind wrapped around the two right. to the 2D to 3D yet. Are you doing CNC anything? Yeah, so I just kind of woodworking CNC, so I'm excited. Okay. Just started doing a little bit of signage with it. Oh, good. I'm gonna start doing some more furniture design with it yeah, too. Yeah, it definitely changes your workflow. Oh yeah, you're gonna really like oh, it. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. So yeah. it's a game changer in multiple aspects. Anything from jigging to final design. So yeah. I'm really stoked for it. Right on. So this is the design that I came up with for the show. Obviously, considering we don't have full facilities here, I made most of the top in New York, and then the bottom I just made with a couple of cuts on the, mm -hmm. the, the, the torch made. So, and because of the confinement of the tabletop, and really, it's really a matter of logistics of carrying. We could have carried yeah. four by four plates, <laughs> yes, but they're too much. So I broke the design in half. So the end of the table has two parts, which obviously could be one if we were willing to mm -hmm. lug around the middle. And then I use a quarter inch because we didn't want to be moving heavy, heavy plates here at the show. Yeah. So this design, I'm going to make it available. So if anybody wants to cut this design, if they like this concept, this design, it's going to be available to be downloaded from maybe the ARC or the Lincoln website. Cool. Yeah. See, uh, you, you added a few angles, obviously for rigidity when you're using a little bit of, yeah. uh, when you're using more flat materials. And then how long did it take you to put together? Just a few minutes. Yeah. That was, I mean, I, t I tacked it. Obviously, in my style, I like those kind of rivet tacks. Yep. If I was going to do, I thought of this while we were here, but considering time, if I was going to do two plates for each side, I would have ran those tacks down the end and I would have had like a nice little 
sort of yeah. like industrial yeah, it detail. Like it riveted on the side. So it would have had half in size with the tack down the whole edge of the outside. Yeah. But that's not really not necessary here at the show. So, but this design, I just kind of did a Google search for industrial yep. table legs. Yep. And it's a combination of two concepts. Yeah, it's pretty hot design. Uh, you see it in a lot of the uh, the big manufacturers doing industrial yeah. stuff, yeah. and then it's got just a little bit of your uh, Jimmy Flair to it. And yep. twist. Thank you. I dig it. It's cool. It's awesome that it's how easy it was to put together. Uh, I mean, a lot of people think it's super complicated to do stuff like that. I mean, the rigidity comes in the quarter inch. I mean, yep. and like I said, I, scale, I think it should be half inch, but yeah. I mean, this shakes as much as any other table. And we don't have it fastened to it just yet only because of time and someone's going to win this and take it home and then they could finish it off. Yeah. So the, the top, this yep. is a uh, rough sawn out of the mill or is it reclaimed? It's rough sawn hemlock that I get in my area. Yep. It's a uh, rough sawn and I buy it. And I, lay it, I let it lay in my yard. So yeah. it comes brand new and I let it lay in my yard and I sell it as barn wood. There you go. <laughs> with no nail holes in it. People don't understand why there's no nail holes in it because it's never been used for anything. <laughs> but in this case, this was fresh. If you looked under the table, you see how fresh it is. But actually, we could just show it quickly. Flip her over? Yeah, flip it over. All right. Just hold it like that. You can see how fresh it is. This is these are uh, they're, they're one inch planks, but they shrink down to about three quarters. And then I made the hot rivets. I bent them through this one by half, and we welded them, and then cut them off. And so the only the wood is only held on by these two steel ribs. And with this hemlock, I just use uh, like a minwax, maybe a jaca beam. Yeah. You know that dark brown. Yep, yep, yep. And I let it. I actually paint it on. And I let it dry for like four or five days. Really? So I just so you brush like a, it on. You get like a thick build up almost. Yeah, I let it just dry. So like like, that, like what it would look like on the edge of the can. Yeah. That's what it looks like on the wood. Yeah, and then like, use water base. And then I sand it, give it a light sanding, and then I do the water base min wax yeah. over it. It's cool, man. It's got a really like a, a deep look to it. It yeah. feels as uh, rich as it actually is. I mean, given time, I would I would have given this maybe two more coats of that waterboard yeah. poly. Give it like a little bit more of a, like a, a nicer touch to the fingers. Yeah, that's what I use on all my stuff that's rough on because you can get a nice build up with the water base yeah. and it doesn't yellow and right. it's also really easy to use. Yeah, that's true. The waterborne doesn't yellow. And if you get like a wood, you get a lot of wood if you, let's say for instance like gray wood, gray yeah. old weathered wood, the waterborne keeps that natural look. Yep. Whereas like regular oil-based poly will yellow it. Takes it all out. Yep, yeah. it's brown again. Yeah. Yeah, dude, awesome design. And then this is just, uh, what, hot rolled steel? You just ground the edges out? Yeah, this is just hot rolled 2x2 two two tube, 16 gauge. I've been using this a lot for a lot of the furniture I've been working on. And I just bought another thousand dollars worth of it just to have. Yeah. And I already got a gig this morning. I got to make ten garment racks out of it. So <laughs> I've been using the hell out of this two by two sixteen gauge. I, now it's like the new two by four in my shop. Yes. Like when we got to do a temporary jig up or something, I'm like, get a two by two. Yeah. They and come sixteen gauge. feet. And they're like thirty bucks a piece. That's you can't beat that. The sixteen yeah. gauge is just. I think it's just thick enough for furniture stuff that you're yeah. still comfortable with. You know, being strong. Yeah. A lot of people think you have to do everything in like quarter inch. Yeah. Like, uh, I do, I do a lot of stuff in 8th inch and the 16 gauge too, yeah. so. Awesome, dude. Cool, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. Where to next? <laughs> hey, everybody. Day two of Fave Fab Tech. Welcome back to the live feed. I believe uh, myself, as well as Douglas with Retro Weld are done with the stool, so we're just going to be checking in with the other guys, finishing up. Let's start off with John Malucky. Let me get back here. Hey, John. What's up, girl? What's going on? Are you knocking this in the face? I am punching, punching it right in the face. <laughs> uh, what's going on with it? So, um, got all of my uh, design cut out of the uh, out of the there we go. Got my whole design cut out of flat sheet on the plasma table. And then what I'm doing is I'm just throwing some tack welds in to get it all squared up. And then yep. we'll go back in and stitch it together real quick. I'll uh, inlay a seat pan and a backrest and we are going to be done. Hopefully it doesn't take me too much. It looks good. What are you making the seat out of? The seat's made out of reclaimed wood. Brought it from Pittsburgh. Um, it's kind of like the style that I use for furniture I do for all my clients and stuff. Yeah. So it should look pretty sharp. I like this design here. This arch. That looks nice. Yeah. So. And then um, the X's resemble the table and yep. kind of so, goes together. Yeah. Pittsburgh is like a city of bridges and I do uh, a lot of designs with the bridge truss kind of style. Nice. So um, just to make it a little bit mine and then use the uh, materials we had available to us to my advantage. I kind of like uh, just morph that into there. Give 
with a little bit of that, you know, John Lucky flavor. Yeah, you know, it's homage to home. Oh, okay, what's it finished with? I use uh, General Finishes and Durovar. Oh, a nice yeah. build on it and that little bit of an amber. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just reclaimed pine. So. And it's not too shiny. It doesn't look like plastic. Nope. It's got a semi-gloss finish and it'll uh, it'll hold up pretty well. It's really cool. What's your Definitely. next step right now? I'll uh, tack up the back and then yeah. I'll put the uh, seat pan in, the top rest, and uh, stitch it all together. Oh, you already have them cut? Oh, I see. Good. Back here, back matches. So you got that front profile and seat pan. There you go. Are you loving these magnets? Yeah, these are nice because they turn on and off. Yeah, I love I've them. got a bunch of them in my shop, and I'll like by the end of a build, I'll have like 16 of them on the table, just like assembled everywhere. Yeah. Um, and they all the weld dust comes off of them when you're finished, which yeah. is great because we get a lot of those ones that are always magnetic, mm -hmm. and you're like scraping them to get the dust off and stuff. So these against are your workbench. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Or so your lungs. Are you using uh, the MIG machine for this? Yeah, so I'm okay. using the 210 MP. Yeah. Um, that's what I run in my shop. Absolutely love this thing. Um, I fired it up and have got it set at 12 gauge um, steel and uh, like I said I'll just throw in a couple little stitch welds here and there. It gets great penetration, really easy setup, for a few seconds. Are you going from the outside or are you doing from the Since inside? we're not grinding, I'm going to do on the inside, but if I was to do this at home, I'd finish weld the whole way around the seat pan and then grind it over. Yeah. Um, but we can't really grind it. Yeah. Well, it looks good. I'll let you get back to work. I'm going to go check in with Zachary. All right. Bye. Yo, Zach. What's going on? What is, oh my gosh, these are looking awesome. It's getting there. These are looking amazing. Except for check that weld out. It looks oh, like that looks awful. That's my first weld. <laughs> oh no. Well, what happened? The, the corners, I was trying to weld the corners off since we don't have a grinder. Yeah, and, uh, oh, weld them off. Yeah, so all your welds don't have to be perfect. I think my very first weld was better than that. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. You're working with what you got. You got to do with what you got. And uh, these look so cool. Off. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's coming together. It's it's, it's kind of hard to visualize, but I think we're finally starting to get to the point. Yeah. I just got these nuts on. That is so amazing. What a cool idea. So essentially, then there's going to be another pad. Here yeah. And, uh, one about this. So finally, I'm sure you guys see me coming off the truck about. I have the mic, so you have to stay close to me. All right. I think you probably see me try and mop this up a few times. But yeah. So this is going to spiral down when I finish welding the rest on. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the bench is going to be sitting in right, right there. So from either side. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That I is so about, cool. I thought about doing them this way, and I guess I still could. No, I think from the side is good. That way you see more of the profile yeah. when people are sitting on it. If they're back like this, you'd only, you wouldn't, yeah. you'd have to get on the side of the bench. The good news is all you have to do to change it is oh, yeah, yeah. about 90 degrees. So. Oh, so you're not actually going to weld it onto this? And I don't know. No, you shouldn't. I love in, the, the in whole. In a perfect world, yeah. uh, I'll have enough compression. Or, uh, I mean, this is yeah. torque. Wrench. I feel how heavy that thing is. Is it hot? Uh, certain parts. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it's pretty hefty. The the thing that I'm worried about that I that I might have to weld it in is the racking. So. Oh yeah. I'm not sure how mm -hmm. uh, how it's going to be, but uh, if I have to put a tack weld on it to to keep it from rocking, that, mm -hmm. that should do. So. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Also, if I had a drill, if we could find a drill, I could put some wood screws in from the bottom so that it's adjusted. We might have a, a Ryobi one. I don't know if it would be able to yeah. muscle through that. That, though yeah we'll see um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there but yeah I'm getting close making some progress yeah it looks amazing Thanks. you did so good on keeping the consistency of the tax and or uh, integrating it into the design until I got to the only visible well. just don't look at that yeah it's know. art it is, you know yeah. we've all been there so but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's getting there. I'm excited to see how it uh, actually turns out. Yeah, I bet whoever is going to get this, I mean, this is actually like a big functional art piece, you know? Yeah. They're going to be so happy. Yeah, it should be, it should be a, it's been a fun build. About how much more time do you have on your build? You know, I think I can probably finish it within the hour. I'm making, oh, really? I'm making pretty good progress right now, so uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And are you using the 210 as well, or are you taking? No, I, you're not taking. I'm, uh, I'm using the big welder. Okay. So yeah. Yep, it's, uh, it's doing a good job. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, well, I'll let you get back to work so you can finish and we can see this awesome stool that you're, or bench that you're building. Excellent. Thank you.
You want to check in with Jimmy? Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, okay, yeah. That's the so, yeah. so, of course, this is the table that Duresta welded up. Did the stool back in New York and did the frame or did all of the leg assembly here. And all of the chairs and stools that we're designing and building is to go with this set. Yeah. So we got two complete. We got the grenade stool, of course, that I put together yesterday that y'all saw, if y'all were tuning in. And then we also got the chair that Douglas with the retro weld put together. It's all TIG with a Sapili uh, wooden seat. I was looking for Johnny Brook. I believe uh, we haven't checked in with him, but I don't know if he is down here. Go down there. Tell me to go down there. Well, what? Okay, we're gonna let you guys go. We will be back on the live feed whenever we find Mr. Brook. His stool. Let's just get give it a good look over. Tell us, a, tell us what the the top is made out of. Just scraps from your shop, or yeah. Whoa. oh, not okay. in place. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is walnut and maple. Yeah, these were just strips. This was left over from a dining table I built a couple weeks ago. But yeah, just glued up, kind of like a long grain cutting board, edge grain cutting board, and then a power carb to the top here to give it that nice little cup for your butt. And uh, yeah, the base is metal. I welded it. As you give us a lucky test again. Yeah. Malucky, come over here and test Johnny's stool. I think I might. Can we just put, like, it looks, anything Malucky sits on looks, looks super small. Ridiculously tiny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate test. It cups the butt so well. It does. So well. It's just a nice form fit on the one butt off. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I went with the carved top. It made, it, it made it very comfy. So you, oh, made, you did that with a, uh, a power carver, right? I did. I'll take 30 here. Yeah, angle grinder. I don't know if they can hear me. Yeah, angle grinder and a uh, it's called a turbo plane. So basically, mm -hmm. just removes wood very quickly. Yep. It was, it was awesome. Super fun. Like very organic, you know. Like you just blast away and you know do it. So yeah, it was fun. What uh, did you have a circle cutting jig for the? Yeah. Okay. So I used a bandsaw to band cut saw. the circle. I love that trick. Yeah. Yeah. I found a really awesome video from Ty Mosier. Yeah. And yeah. It was, it was a really quick little build. So, cool. Uh, yeah, it didn't take long at all. It looks awesome, and I'm really glad that there's another chair without a back on it. Because yes, then mine cool. looks, yeah, yeah <laughs> not I'm so, so small. I'm tired of building chairs. I was not adding a back to mine. Yeah. I'm so sick of building chairs. So, the stool Can you was. Can these yours again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's mine. So, grenade, of course. So without a back, they're all the same height, but without a back, yeah, ours just looks so tiny. much, yeah, they just look so tiny, but they're actually, yeah, they're comfortable. They're Here at Fabtech, there's not a lot of seating. So now that we've built the seats, we have a place to sit down. Nice. Let's go check in with uh, Malucky. Where is his build? You want to check out Malucky's build? John, come over here and let's talk about this stool. Man, you put this together really quick. I, yes, I did. Um, so when I cut everything on the plasma table, it just like fit right together nicely. And then I uh, put some corner, uh, what, tack welds throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, went together nice. Yeah, get up so everybody can see it. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Life is so hard. So you put these in, what, underneath with some cell tapping screws or something? Yeah, so I've got just some uh, flat stock underneath. These sit on top of it, and then I use a screw to keep them in place. Yeah. Um, spacing's a little bit off, but I kind of had to, uh, didn't have, I could find space to get the space. It looks good. Yeah, it turned out all right. I brought the reclaimed wood from Pittsburgh, like I said before. Uh, and then I do a bunch of stuff uh, that's modeled around bridges, because we are a city of bridges. Yeah. Looks excellent. Yeah. It, uh... It complements Douglas's really well, I think. Yeah, I was trying to play off Jimmy's table base design a little bit too, yeah. and, and just uh, and try to hit. No one really did a chair besides yourself uh, that was just completely from the sh the, the, tor the torch mate. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do uh, something like that too, which was just so cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's really uh, it gives people an idea of what they can do if they have something that can complete. I mean, to be able to completely cut out all the parts that you need for either a, yep. a table base or a chair. I think that's really cool. Yeah, the 2D to 3D concept is it's a little difficult. I'm starting to learn and design that way a little more. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm pleased with it. Awesome. Well, it looks good. How about we go? We're gonna, we're gonna have Doug jump in. So oh, okay. Talk about Doug's chair. Douglas? Yep. This is my chair. 
Tell me about it. Well, this you is tigged a, everything, right? It's 14 gauge steel, and I made this part in my shop before I came to the show. And then so what I did is I pre-cut all the steel, and then I tig weld everything together here. How long did the tigging take on this? A long time. Yeah, pretty much all day, right? Longer than anticipated, but I had a blast making it, so. And I think you did good. I mean, you really haven't been doing tig welding for very long, yeah, right? so I've been tig welding for about six months, and so I'm, I'm real careful with how it turned out, but I know I have room for improvement. But every time I tig, I learn something, and I'm getting better every day, so. Yeah, it looks amazing. Thank you. And the wood is sapili. The wood is sapili. And then what finishes on it? Uh, I just put a clear coat on it. Yeah, I like I like the sheen on it. Yeah. I like things that don't have that like plastically right. plasticky look. Yeah, I'm real happy with it. I'm real happy with how the profile turned out. Yeah, the angle. Yeah, nice. I think you nailed it. Nice angle. I cut a little bezel right there, a little pie, and then I bent the metal back, and then I tape weld it all up and ground down the welds on that. But I wanted to leave the welds so everybody can kind of see, you know, what you can do as a newbie for six months. So. What? Uh, are you uh, disappointed you're not taking it home? Yeah, I wish I could keep it, but I know this will go to a good place, so yeah. it's all for a good cause. If you all don't know, we're going to be raffling off all of the items here. So I believe each one is going to go to an individual, right, instead of the entire set. So it should be pretty cool yeah. by the by the end of the show. Let's go over here and check in with Zach. Zachary. Hey. You don't have this thing put together yet? No, I was waiting, uh, waiting for you guys. Oh, okay. You want to do it on camera? Absolutely. You need help? You need a hand? Yeah. Uh, I have the microphone. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we get another another assistant here to put it together? Or you want to? Yeah. Or, I mean, I can totally go. help you. <laughs> I am kind of handy. Yeah. I'm not useless. Well, I didn't know if. I, uh, what, what um? What's your process for putting it together? Uh, is this still hot? This is still pretty hot. Is it? Well, no. I guess it's, it's my like brain telling me don't burn yourself. It is warm though. Okay, I trade it. No, it's fine. Is this already set to the depth that you want it? Pretty close. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to tighten it a little bit. Okay. How cool! I love this concept. Go ahead. I'm gonna have to open mine up just a little bit. I just last thing I did was uh, weld these pads on, so that is so a cool. Thicker. A little bit. so creative and it came out amazing Zach Thank you. oh I see so you can tighten down on the bolt so that the legs can stay that's the idea yeah hopefully I won't need a wrench to get it up to get it, uh, yeah get it open here. it's a little bit of a process getting it together but it's worth it it's a piece of art that's oh, functional Well, you know what? We'll just get that one close and then we can fine tune it. I will let you take over putting together this side. Don't trip over. So what gave you the idea for the design? So I figured it's a, uh, it's a fabrication event. So I figured I wanted to do something that ties in with fabrication. And I went out into my shop looking for ideas. And uh, on my workbench was a seat clamp. And I figured everybody, everybody has experience with those. And um, I always like to try and come up with creative ways to do simple things like tables and benches. And I thought, well, maybe we could just enlarge the seat clamp big enough to actually become the legs. What is your what is your design process? Whenever you come up with, okay, I'm going to take the seat clamp and I'm going to be fabricating it from just stuff around the shop or easily accessible. Like, how do you, what do you start with? Well, it always starts with an idea. And yeah. I think that for me is the, the most fun part of the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So it starts with an idea, and like I was saying a minute ago, I really like to, to try and come up with uh, a different way to do, to do things mm -hmm. that you haven't seen. Um, I do a lot of custom furniture, and I want everything to be a conversation piece. Mm -hmm. I want people to walk into the room and have to have to bring it up. Have to comment on have it. To comment yeah. On it. So I think that's kind of the inspiration for a lot of the the ideas and uh, sketching things out and just trying to come up with unconventional ways to do conventional things. I think you nailed it on this one. But I like the idea that it's not just a, a non-functioning C clamp. Like the fact that it's all thread and it actually has the nuts that will like you're tightening down on the bench itself. That's the, that's like the really cool part to me. Thank you. Do you want me to hold something? It's starting to get heavy. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to be worthless. That's all right. Let's see here. We're getting close. That's perfect. Hey, Gabriel, while you're doing that, maybe you can tell us again about the live, the live raffle. The live raffle. Yeah. So at the end, do you know when the raffle is going to be? End of day. End of day today? Yeah. Oh, wow. So if you're at Babtech, uh, swing by and enter into the raffle because all the pieces that we've made, Jimmy's table, my grenade stool, this amazing uh, C-clamp C bench, is that what you're calling it? Sure. Douglas, Johnny's, and John's are all going to be raffled off individually. So be sure to enter in and uh, so you have a chance to take home one of these pieces. Yeah, custom furniture. I think it would be amazing as a set though. You know what I mean? That I like the Mod Podge, how they're all different. I think 10 grand is reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> Split the proceeds, yeah. You know what, I'm tonight, have a good time. Again. Again. Well, I'm gonna need a, to improvise some sort of a, uh, some sort of, I'm gonna use the wood clamp to try and tighten that up a bit. Yeah. Ooh, how cool. Yeah, I'll need to get a little tightened up, but uh, yeah, we'll try it. Let me sit. Lucky right. test. No, let's Not start, let's, let's start with me, maybe. I'm going to tighten it down before we give it to Before more. we give it to John. I mean, two of y'all is more than one of I don't know about that. Uh, pretty sure. <laughs> yep. Okay. 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 I'm so happy this didn't collapse. No, it's so amazing. You did a great job. All right, everybody watching in the live feed, we're going to be back in a little bit, show off the table as well as the complete set of stools and benches. So stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to FabTech 2017 Facebook Live, right? We're Facebook Live. And here we are with everybody that made their piece of furniture for the table. I made the table in New York, but I brought the, the tabletop I made in New York. We made the base here this morning. We have Zach from ZH Fabrication. Zach, talk a little bit about what you made. Uh, well, I made uh, the C-clamp bench here that you're looking at. This is pretty crazy. You brought parts to make this big giant C-clamps and we plasma cut the C-clamps here at the show. We plasma cut the straights. Yep. You welded and bent them into place. How was it working here with limited tools? It was interesting, but I think that's what we do best. Uh, we, yeah. we improvise. We, we do the best with what we have. We gotta look at the camera because we're gonna get yelled at. All right. We gotta look at the camera. <laughs> uh, I think but, that's that's half the fun of making stuff is uh, figuring out how to overcome obstacles and right. solve problems. And, Absolutely. Uh, I always say, don't worry. I'll just make it work. Exactly. Like when we got here, we weren't quite sure what materials were here that we could use. And I was like, you know what? In this whole entire arena, there's got to be enough material for us to scavenge in. Absolutely. But we had what we needed. But going into it, we weren't worried. Yeah. Yeah. We made it work. What do you like about Fab? This is your first Fab Tech. My first Fab Tech. What do you think? It's, it's incredible. It is so much bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, Isn't it? Yeah. Me too. I never been here. It's like three three football fields by like three football fields of yeah crazy stuff. And cra I don't want the electric bill that's going to happen next week. I don't no, want that. Not at all. Right on. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Let's go talk to everybody else. Absolutely. Split up. John. Is there enough room for both of us on the camera? <laughs> this is John Malecki from Pittsburgh, and John, tell us about your chair. What, this is predominantly CNC plasma cut. Yep, so I had uh, all the components plasma cut out on the Torchmate, um, and then I went and inset some reclaimed wood I brought from back in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, everything's tacked together um, in the corner joints, so pretty rigid and a really quick, easy build. And the reason I say the fact that you're from Pittsburgh is because you said it's a big inspiration about the way this looks. Yeah, so uh, Pittsburgh, quote unquote, city of bridges, um, get a lot of 
clients that are looking for something nostalgic to Pittsburgh, right. I include this uh, bridge style into some stuff, right. um, as well as the cross hatching on the sides to try to play off your design with the base right. a little bit. Yeah, while you're down there, same with me. I just got some industrial inspiration online, and I just put together sort of like a, a cast iron style base, something that we could make here simply. It's just quarter inch steel. Uh, we do have limited means here at the show, yeah. so I mean, these are the type of things that we would take back to our shop, we'd angle grind the corners, soften things, add gussets where necessary, but in light of the time limitations and the work limitations here, we did the best we can with what we got. Yeah. But absolutely. it looks great. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Right on. Good Appreciate work. It. April? Where's April? April, tell us a little bit about your hand grenade. What was the inspiration for hand grenade? My inspiration? I didn't want to come here with all of you like pros and look, <laughs> look like a chump. Pro? I was like, I got to come, I got to come out with a badass design. Oh, bad. We gotta come out bad with a butt. bad butt design. Bad butt design. Very cool design. <laughs> anyway, I was originally gonna go with the bomb and have like the tail, uh, like a bomb, and then the tail up, and then that be the flat. You wouldn't be able to get on a plane. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna let this on the plane. <laughs> right on. No, but then I I switched over to a hand grenade. Right on. Very I just cool. Wanted something that was gonna be. And how how did you design these parts? What did you design it in? Uh, SketchUp. I do all my all my CAD modeling in SketchUp, and then converted it to a DXF, and then it cut out on the the torch main. How did you slice it up? What do you mean slice? Like, like how did you create the slices? Like, did you, so you created the parts and then made the flats? You were able to take them and change them flat in space? Like each one of these yeah. parts, you built it, and I then you were it. able to pull out the component yeah. and then lay it flat on a sheet. Lay it flat on a sheet, get a top-down view, and uh -huh. then convert it to a DXF. Because the DXF, you can, or in SketchUp, you can tell it to, to send out to a 2D model. So you can take your 3D part and then turn it into a 2D. Oh, right on. Anyways, it's really cool. So yeah, I just... I mean, but that's what gave me the precision because all of this, if, if something's skewed or slightly off or the tolerances aren't cut right, then of course it won't go together. Why? He's leaving. That's it? You gotta say bye to him. You can say, this is the guy who made this whole part of the event possible. Uh, this uh, is, thank you, buddy. Yeah. Craig, Craig Coffey. Thank you, buddy. Craig believes in the YouTubers, so Craig, thank you, buddy. Yeah, he supports our channels, makes this happen. Yep. So this is beautiful. Thank you. Good job. How many pieces are in that welded together? Uh, what? Seven rings, eight uprights, four levers, the pin and thing, whatever that adds up to. Oh, okay. I thought you would like <laughs> spit like 72 and a half. I thought you would. <laughs> no. It's funny because when I make a table like this, people go, what do you, how, what, how high? I go, I don't know, about it's this big, <laughs> about that deep, about that high. That's what it felt good. You didn't measure it? I'm like, nah. So, so. The, well, it is 18 bombs. inches tall to right. match your table, right. which it looks small because the, the height made the proportions, right? Because right. it has to stay proportioned. So the right. height made everything. So it, right. looks, it looks small, but. That's funny, because in your social media, I, I thought it was like this huge. big. Everybody yeah. thought it was, it was so the huge. size of a wine barrel. And then you put John Malecki on it, and it turns into a, a beer keg. <laughs> <laughs> John, come over here and sit on this. I mean, might as well, right? You put a, a pro football player on it. <laughs> Is it strong enough? <laughs> Yeah, it's good, man. It's awesome. It's I, I, I put six of me on there. Right on. All right, April, thank you for coming. It's great to hang out with you. Thanks, Jimmy. It's been amazing. wonderful. Johnny Brook, tell us what you got. So I got kind of a little modern stool here. It's a uh, walnut and maple top. Right. It uh, power carved it, so angle grinder with a turbo plane on it. Maybe How did you glue these together, going back in time? How did you glue that together? What glue do you use? Tight bond, too. Tight bond, that's Standard it. Standard stuff, you know. I always ask because I want to know if anybody has anything particular, but uh, tight bond, too, comes up a lot. Pretty much With standard. a lot of professional Whatever woodworkers. Home Depot. Yep. Uh, so it's basically like an edge grain cutting board, essentially. Right. And then cut it circle on the bandsaw. And right. then carved it out, man, so. And talk about the bottom, what we welded? Yeah, so just one inch this square tube. Is one inch, but a quarter inch side, right? Yeah, it's pretty thick stuff. It's heavy, so, heavy stuff. And did you go over heavy. to... to uh, yeah, fared, grinded it, ground it for me. So that was so nice of them. So. You know, I only just learned that the word ground is the uh, past tense for grind. Oh, really? I only just learned that. I'm only 50. <laughs> nice. I've been saying grind it for like 20 grinded. years. Grinded. Yeah, so I'm really happy with it. I mean, again... <laughs> Stools just look so tiny compared to chairs. I don't know why. I mean, they're yeah. the same, basically. But Let me ask you an OCD tiny. question. Yep. Is this stripe diagonally opposed to the... On purpose. 
it is conscious, right? It's conscious. It is conscious? It is definitely conscious. <laughs> it is, it's okay. It's actually conscious. <laughs> right on. Yeah, okay. I was thinking, do I want it straight? Do I want it Because me, I would look at it like a week later and go, oh, that doesn't line up with anything. Uh, I, like I should. It, it kind of like brings the diagonal of yeah. the no, I like together. It. I don't know. I, I like it. So. Absolutely. I'm looking at it right here, and then this line comes across well, and becomes part of the, the leg. Yeah. 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 I, I knew you had a conscious system. I was just picking man. on you. It flows. I'm a little too ACD, OCD for uh, <laughs> I know that. that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, man. Very cool. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming. It's great to hang out with you this yeah, you week. Too, man. You too. And uh, next we have Doug. Yep. Doug from RetroWeld. Doug, talk a little bit about what we have here. All right, so uh, I made this. I made part of this in my shop at home, just because we're looking for a lot here. So I fabricated this part. It's all 14 gauge steel, and uh, I actually pulled in diamonds from your table design. Oh, right on. Kind of tie together. Very cool. And then the wood seat is made out of sapili. So I tick uh, the metal together, and I'm a I'm a new TIG welder. That makes sense. You did a great job. It's taken about six months, and yeah. so. Uh, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. And this is two two planks of sapelli glued together? Yes, yeah, it was a long board that I cut. And, so it's uh, two pieces of wood that I glued together. And how are they fastened to the seat? Is it just sitting here for now? It's I mean, just screwed to the bottom. Oh, you did screw it? Yeah. Can we look I've at got it? Some, yeah. Pick it up with me. I just want to see. Just like this. Oh, nice. Nice ribbing. Very good. Yeah. So now I'm not a woodworker, but uh, I think it turned yeah. out great. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Very sturdy. So what was your favorite part of Fabtech this week? Meeting all the people. And it's just incredible. The, uh, the turnout and, and working with other great YouTubers like yourself. And Thank you. Same here. A lot of good companies here. So. Yep. So many good fans and friends came out to say hello yeah, to this everybody. Yeah, first, first Fabtech, so it's, it's exciting for me. Talking about it, I mean, I'm going to blow up Fabtech a little bit. It's amazing to come here and just see what's possible. You don't even know what's possible because you never even thought about it for one second. Back. What are we putting that? We're gonna put it back over there. We're gonna play a game of cards. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, guys, I was just talking about how Fabtech is amazing because you don't even know what's possible, and then all of a sudden you see this machine that can computer bend like a mailbox out of a piece of sheet metal. <laughs> And or plasma etch or laser etch or laser cut three inch steel. It's just it's incredible to see where like the industrial revolution from 150 years ago has gotten until today. And I wonder what this Fabtech would have been like in 1850. You know, what would it have been like? Probably. <laughs> well, I would be happy if that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Who needs electricity? The printing presses. Yeah, I would, it's funny. Taylor and I have talked about exploring the possibilities of living near, a, like, a living in a mill house, so that we have like a line shaft going all the time. Save electricity on that. So, guys, do we wave goodbye to the blimp as it rises away? Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Wait, can I do one interview? Can I do, <laughs> Norm? Can I do one interview? We got a minute. All right, I'm gonna pull my friend in from the outside. Guys, thank you all so much. Can I get a picture of you guys? Just all right, okay. Really Good. All right, and then after, I'm gonna pull in my, my, my friend and mentor. We're gonna to talk to my friend, Mr. Pete. What do we got? <laughs> Mr. Pete, come over here. You're on deck for an interview. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Oh yeah, well hang on a second. You can get in the picture. I want this one with Mr. Pete. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, take you take a picture. All right. And then you step out for the just for their social media stuff. All right, all right, cool. All right, that's it, we're good. All right. So I wanted to just introduce Mr. Pete to the world. If you don't know Mr. Pete, go follow his YouTube channel. I consider him the world's machine shop teacher. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Tubal Kane, I go by, as well as Mr. Pete too, yep. too, too. But uh, I've met Jimmy before at uh, the Ohio show. Oh, right, right, in yeah. Janesville. Yeah, we had a good time at Janesville. And, right on. Uh, and I consider uh, Jimmy the godfather of shop <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> videos on YouTube because uh, if I had all of his uh, views on my uh, channel, I'd throw mine away. <laughs> Let me ask something. Do you weld? A little bit. 
A little bit. Yeah. And you've been a high school shop teacher for many years? Yeah. And for, as you... 40 years. For 40 years. Yeah. And when did you retire? Like how long ago? Uh, 20 years ago almost. Wow. 18, but you, but 18. you never stopped. Was there a lull where you realized you needed to go and buy machines and stuff? Right. I always had a shop in my basement. Right. But um, I expanded it, bought more machinery since right. I started doing this. And, right. and it, just, it just kind of took off, same as what you're doing. It's, right. Uh, it became kind of a big deal. Right. And uh, do you TIG weld or, or wire weld? Uh, or? Wire weld a little bit. I, right. And I do have a Lincoln welder. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I representing it in high school used. Of oh, right on. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you for being my inspiration and my muse for and, everything and, you do. And I thank you for thank the you support both. and the interest. Of and, course. And, and for being a, a, a real buddy as oh, well. Thank you. And uh, I, I good enjoyed guy. you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed FabTech 2017. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, girl, now we're still in.